Arsenal's Champions League journey comes to an end in Germany. Bayern Munich winning 1-0 on the night, 3-2 on aggregate. With very much something of some lessons we've seen before, um, but ones I think Arsenal are certainly better equipped to deal with this time around. This is the Arsenal Rule Reaction Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is our Raw Reaction Show, the show which we join you the morning after the night before. And uh, for a second time in a row, I'm sad to be bringing you group therapy as we like to talk about it. Um, we like to discuss it this way. And uh, I know that some people will be listening to this more so on catch up. And I never blame you. I like to always start off our shows in which we talk about a defeat or a uh, an element of dropped points with the same message that I always do, and that is that Arsenal and football is just a thing. It's just part of life. It's part of your lives, and there are many things that should be ranking far higher for you. So if you need to take a break, if you need to take uh, yourself away for whatever reason from this morning routine, from Arsenal, just take a few days, spend some time with your family, doing some other things detached from football, I'd highly recommend it. I really would, because if you feel like that that is what you need, absolutely take that opportunity to do so. Make sure you look after yourselves and look after your mental spaces as well. Um, but we are going to continue and talk about this because that's what I do. Um, it's just it's it's the way in which that we have, I'd certainly respond to this by talking about it. It helps me contextualise it. It helps me get different points of view from you people uh, joining us as well. Speaking of which, thank you so much for tuning in, uh, especially this morning of all mornings. Um, to Barney, Matt G, Black Shine, Red Star. We've got Mike and Brad and Louis, Darren, Stevie. Uh, we've got Damien, Stephen, uh, Daniel, Amira, GZ4, Rowan, Paul, Carlton, Wayne, Steve, Tony, uh, Mr. Reed, Nathan, thank you to you all for joining us. Um, very, very kind um, for you to do so. If you could help us um, by dropping a like on the video, helping us to reach that 1K everyday target, that would be massively appreciated because um, these mornings after defeats are our biggest challenge. Um, and uh, I know the community here is unbelievable. So if you could drop a like on the video to help us to reach that 1K everyday target, that would be massively humbling so thank you um and what's going to happen is the show is going to be split into two parts uh we're going to have uh, part one which is going to be all about the game um my thoughts running through some of the slides and things like that and then part two we're going to open up to the chat box there's potential for there potentially to maybe be a link thrown out but i, I like sometimes these mornings to get people just to call in if indeed they can onto these shows sometimes we'll see how it goes um we'll see how we fare but we'll kick off with the slides, um, Arsenal won by, uh, sorry, <laughs> I wish it was, uh, Bayern won, Arsenal nil, 3-2 to Bayern on aggregate across the two legs. Arsenal humbled in the Allianz as Tuchel and Nack's perfect plan to beat the Gunners. And it was uh, a very measured, astute, experienced, clinical in the end performance from uh, Bayern Munich. And... Uh, they were certainly, I think, a side which enacted that uh, experience that they have over what ultimately has been, you know, a side that is is entering into its first forays back into the competition after a significant hiatus. And that significant hiatus saw Arsenal, when they were in the competition out of the Champions League in the last 16, from 2011 all the way through till they dropped out of it entirely, um, and Arsenal have obviously gone back into this competition and reached a stage which they haven't reached in 14 years at the first time of asking to be knocked out, not by, you know, the sides that Arteta had really become and started to get a bit of a reputation for with Sporting and Olympiacos. But no, this time it was Bayern Munich that are knocked out Arsenal, a side that has got a history of knocking Arsenal out of this competition. And while some people may point to the fact that this is not the same Bayern Munich that have knocked Arsenal sides out in the past and humbled us with 10-2 scorelines, I think that people that are trying to downplay the quality of Bayern Munich are doing so maybe out of attention maybe out of it being rivals potentially looking at it and saying, well, Arsenal have underachieved here. But it's no doubt that this Bayern Munich side is still incredibly, uh, incredibly quality, um, incredibly filled with quality and are always going to be a test no matter who indeed was not available on the night for them. And uh, they've got Amanda, of course, that won 
the uh, competition with Chelsea only a couple of seasons ago. And uh, that experience for Arsenal will be something that they take forwards into upcoming campaigns. But to move forwards into the game itself, we didn't really test Manuel Neuer. We had one opportunity, which I'll come on to talk about when I talk about Martinelli in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, but we didn't really offer too much in terms of creating meaningful opportunities. It was, I felt something of a nervous, cautious display I felt like we went to the Etihad with even more intent and purpose behind our performance when we went there than we did here. Something about the competition, something about the European night, as we saw in Lens, as we saw in Porto. There's just something at the moment that mentally in this competition, I don't think there's like a, a, a winning mentality problem or anything like that, but certainly on a mentality standpoint of playing in these huge European nights, there's still something that we need to get over. There's still things we need to gain. There's still things we need to learn. And there was something really cautious about this performance. It certainly didn't feel like two legs other than the first 10 to 15 minutes of the first leg where Arsenal felt like they were the better side. It felt like as soon as we went 2-1 down in the first leg, it was almost as if Bayern had given Arsenal a bit of a slap around the face, a bit of a reality check, a bit of, no, we're Bayern Munich and this is what we can do. And I don't think necessarily, even with the, the equaliser that we got at the Emirates, we fully recovered from that. And then the, the pain of how the game in the first leg ended with the injustice that Arsenal felt with the penalty decision, I think perhaps has bled into this. And they've gone into this game much more, you know, much more... Uh, cautiously and ultimately I think that's that's been something of a downfall and I was frustrated that we didn't see some players come off the bench like Partey who I thought would have offered us something of a solution to the the midfield frustrations that we were getting we weren't getting any penetration through the middle whatsoever there was no incisiveness really about our passing and then when we did get opportunistic breaks they were misplayed passes players like Declan Rice players like Ben White players that have been so consistent for us throughout the course of the season, were misplaying passes. Saka really struggled to get into the game. Um, Martinelli, I'll talk about now, um, because it was Martinelli, of course, that had our biggest chance. I said before the game, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have picked him. Um, I'd have went back and forth with a number of selections. Some included Trossard, some included Jesus, but none of them, for me, included Martinelli. The reason being for that isn't a slight on the player. It's just that he's not been himself this season. He's not been the Martinelli of last season. He's come back. And I think that's more so perhaps in the last few games since he came back from that injury he suffered at Sheffield United. I don't know if a case of it, he was being rushed back and he's come back too quickly. But I would have gone, and it's easy to say, of course, with the benefit of hindsight. But for me, Jesus or Trossard would have been better picks um, to start this game. They both caused Bayern way more problems across the two legs than Martinelli did. Um, and from my perspective, at least, having a player like Trossard in the position that Martinelli ended up being, I would have banked on him scoring. I know the obvious retort to that as well. Trossard had a big chance against Villa and missed it. Doesn't mean that they're going to score all the chances they get, of course. But you look at Trossard, you look at his numbers, you look at the finishing data. He is the best finisher that we've got at the club. And I felt as though if we would get a, uh, an opportunity and we wouldn't get many, I'd rather they were fall into the player who has performed best from a finishing perspective this season. And Martinelli just looked... He looked energetic at times, you know, he looked fiery at times and got into that position to score, but he still lacked things for me. And I think Kimmich still did an excellent job in mitigating him. And, you know, sadly, by the time that we brought on Jesus and we brought on Trossard, we'd lost all of our momentum from the first half because we'd gone one nil down. And trying to bring those players on at one nil down away from home in the Allianz Arena, it did prove too much of a challenge in the end for this Arsenal side. And uh, selection wise, I was happy with the defence. It was the back four that I wanted to see. The midfield, I did want to see Partey play this game. And I have to ask, like, kind of what's going on there? Like, why is Partey, who is supposedly back, has been working very hard to be back? I spoke to Partey um, after the Luton game. Um, and he said he'd worked exceptionally hard to get back to where he is and get back and playing. And he wants to contribute towards the end of the season. But why he doesn't play a part in this game when I think he's stylistically, I think he was well suited to actually play this game with the passes that he could have broken up the midfield gaps. I think Jorginho is a good player, but, you know, in games in which Bayern are, are more dominant, had more of the ball, were looking very dangerous on the counter, he can make us look exceptionally vulnerable at periods. And he was trying to force things a little bit too much. Declan Rice, again, there was moments where he lost the ball. He seemingly has faded as a lot of players have. And we're going to talk about the fading. But ultimately, the goal comes from a moment of, of three switch-offs defensively we aren't quick enough to stop the initial cross when they're not quick enough to get to the the second cross 
Um, sorry, we're not quick enough for the first cross. We're then not quick enough to get to the second cross from Guerrero. And then we're very static in the box. Martinelli's static, Tomiyasu is static, and, and Kimmich kind of runs in relatively unquestioned, relatively unmarked, relatively unchallenged, and, and scores an excellent header. For me, Kimmich has been the best player across the two legs. Him and Goretzka um, in particular, both players, Lima had two good games, I felt, as well. But Kimmich and Goretzka in particular, I thought, won Bayern Munich this, this two-legged affair. They were absolutely excellent. And Goretzka's not had the best of seasons by the standards of what Bayern Munich fans and by outside critics would suggest. But he turned up in this game, and that perhaps shows you you know, the difference at the moment between having Declan Rice, who is coming into his first Champions League season and learning this for the first time, and a player like Goretzka that's been doing this season upon season for a very long time, Kimmich as well in that also. So you cannot switch off against this team, and we did for one minute as well. Musiala, your right front row in the chat as well, was also another excellent player. Sané as well really did turn up. At the end of the day, Bayern Munich turned up across the two legs. They turned up in a big way. They tactically out uh, outclassed us, and, and it's not surprising. Um, necessarily because they are an excellent team of excellent players, even without some key players like Gnabry and, and Coman and, and Davies, they've still got so much quality. And that certainly showed experienced quality as well. Um, you know, you players like Masraoui, who came in, has been playing in the Champions League before we've done it with Ajax. You've got Guerrero, who's been playing in the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund as well. Um, and has already obviously uh, performed really well at this, this high standard. Uh, you've got players coming in in the forward line um, like, like Leroy Sané, who has played with Manchester City. You've got um, Harry Kane, of course, who was a hundred million pound signing, but was actually a lot quieter. I thought Kane was. I think we dealt with Kane quite well throughout the fixture, and defensively, it was just this one switch off that's cost us, and that's the difference. Uh, Arteta said after the game, it was a game of really small margins, and and certainly that is, and that's where we've got to now. We're a team that are no longer getting battered ten two by Bayern Munich. We're a team that have have kind of caught up to a degree. And the only difference between us and them, I think, is that experience. Um, and I think that showed across the two legs in the end. Um, moving forwards, we've got to talk about ultimately Arteta and, and where things went wrong. I think we've touched upon some of them already. I think the selection, there's there's a couple of questions that the left-hand side, in particular Martinelli, I've already talked about. I'm not going to go over, um, you know, already trodden water. Not bringing on Partey, I still think, is a bit of an issue. Again, I've, I've talked about that. And... Um, but overall, I think the biggest the biggest thing about Arteta this season is going to be the tiredness. And it's a very quick slide, this one, because it leans into the next one, which is that we are a tired side. We are spent. We are utterly fatigued. And part there's 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 several reasons for this. Some of it is out of our own doing, some of it is out of our control, and some of it is certainly something that uh comes for every single team at different stages, at different uh, levels. But ultimately for Arsenal, um, this fatigue and tiredness has, has played into our last, you know, our last game against Villa. It certainly was there. It's there tonight, um, uh, last night rather. And I fear that it's going to be there between now and the end of the season as well. But what I do look forward to is hopefully a summer that recognises the shortcomings of this season, which is that we need to make sure that we strengthen and I had a good conversation with a few people on social media, which I, I knew was going to be dangerous. I thought, shall I jump onto socials after this game? I, it's a very brave thing to do to jump onto social after a game like last night. But I did it and I got into a few good conversations. And, you know, I think some people obviously are putting some very emotional stuff out after the game. And some people necessarily, I think, maybe need to, needed to sleep on things. A few people, you know, I disagree with Alex from the different knock about his take about, you know, the squad necessarily. We agree that Arteta, from a rotation standpoint, needs to do more. Without question, he needs to do more. Um, there are times in which we could have rotated players this season, but haven't. You think about the game against Lawns at home in the Champions League. We're five new up at halftime. Why aren't we bringing off loads of players? We're five new up against Sheffield United away from home. Why aren't we bringing off players like Martinelli and Saka at halftime? Let alone, you know, 60, 70 minutes into a game, bring them off at halftime. Where's this fear from Arteta to bring players off even when we look so secure? West Ham United. Another game where I don't think we made a half-time substitution, did we? Let me just have a quick look at that game. Um, but I'm pretty sure if I go through the timeline of that, let's go to half-time. Uh, that's 6-0 uh, at half-time. No, at half-time, the team that were making changes were West Ham. Mavropanos and Phillips came on. Zuma and Alvarez uh, came off. Arsenal didn't make a change in the game until the 67th minute. So more than 20 minutes into a second half, at which point you're already leading 4-0 at half-time. 
we left players on for another 20 minutes. So, uh, Saka and Rice coming off in the 67th minute. Um, Trossard also coming off in the 67th minute. We made three changes. But you could have made those three changes at half time. Those three changes could have been made at half time against West Ham. And then you've saved Saka even more minutes on the field. If we'd have made those changes against Sheffield United, Martinelli maybe doesn't get injured. It's easy to say with the benefit of hindsight, of course. But I think these are moments where it's in our own hands that we've not changed things enough, that we've not made enough rotation. And so this weekend against Wolves, Saka doesn't play. If I'm Mikel Arteta, Saka cannot start against Wolves. And people might say, well, it's a must-win game. And you're right, it is a must-win game because we're still in the title race. We're only two points behind the leaders. But I'm telling you for Toffee right now, if Saka and our main team started this weekend, I don't have much hope of how we're going to deal with a Chelsea side that look on much better form than they previously were and a Spurs side that have had two weeks rest going into the North London derby. We have got to manage these next three games meticulously and effectively. And for me, I'd like to see us making significant changes for the Wolves game. This is a Wolves team, by the way, that are good, but they are lacking some key players. Pedro Neto, of course, not available for them. This is a, a Wolves team that have faded somewhat in the second half of the season. If you have a quick look at their results over the last few weeks or so, they're not winning necessarily as many games. They were knocked out of the FA Cup by Coventry. They um, they drew with Nottingham Forest recently. They lost at home to West Ham United. They drew away at, um, at Burnley. They lost to Aston Villa. They've not won a game in the league since their 2-1 win over Fulham on the 9th of March. They lost 3-0 to Newcastle before that. Um, they narrowly beat a very poor Sheffield United side. And then it was an away win at, at Spurs, which was on 17th of February. But the game before that, they lost at home 2-0 to Wolves. Um, and, and I think that there's, this is a Wolves side that we should be looking, especially without Pedro Neto, that we have to rotate. Uh, and Laughing Man says, you know he's going to start Saka. And, and if he does, I will be very frustrated. I will be very, very frustrated if Saka does start the game. We might win the game. We might be better. But my goodness me, if he starts and we don't win the game, there is going to be all hell to pay. <laughs> there really will. Because I just think that we have to make sure that we're rotating some players for this one. I think you have to take out Rice. I think you have to take out... Um, Saka, I think you have to take out perhaps Ben White. You have to take out um, one of the, Erdegaard, I think, deserves a rest. I think Erdegaard needs to be rested. That's two games where he's gone down. He had to come off against Villa. He carried on playing against Bayern. Again, one of the only players that I thought really did show up against Bayern was, again, Erdegaard. Some brilliant movements and plays from him. Sadly, not enough on the day. But I think we absolutely need to rest these players against Wolves. And so I think we need to be bringing in Vieira on the right-hand side. Or you can play Jesus right and Nelson left if you want to. I think you need to bring in Vieira for, for Odegaard. Or if you want to play Smith Rowe, I wouldn't. But I'd rather play Vieira. I think you need to bring in Partey for Rice. You know, I think we need to be putting Tommy Asso on the right-hand side. Kivior or Zinchenko on the left-hand side. You can keep the centre-halves. I've not got an issue with Saliba and Gabriel's fitness at the moment. I think there as a foundation. It's important to keep them there. Raya as well at the back. But we need to make changes this weekend because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if we don't make those changes, if we don't rest players against Wolves, it is a bigger risk to not rest them with Chelsea and Spurs to come than it is to make the changes away at Wolves. I, I just think that we have to. Um, and we've got players that are rested. But they might not be, they might like Vieira, Partey have not played much football. But they're not going to be tired. They shouldn't be tired in the same way that Saka and Odegaard and Rice look tired. They shouldn't be. And that needs to be taken into account um, in this weekend's fixtures. Now, for some perspective, of course, Manchester City also went out of the competition at this same stage as Arsenal did, losing on penalties to Real Madrid. Real Madrid and Bayern Munich will face each other in the semi-finals of the competition. I think that most people would have put down City and Arsenal as favourites to go through to the semi-finals before the ties kicked off as the draw was made. I think the favourites to progress from both ties were both Arsenal and Manchester City. And it tells you the situation of the, of the Champions League. If you are distraught and dumbfounded and trying to find out the reasons as to why, it's because this competition is exceptionally difficult. You know, even a side like City that could win the treble, taking, I mean, Erling Haaland, Akanji, De Bruyne, all asking Pep Guardiola to come off. Guardiola talking to the media after the game explained that all three of those players asked to be taken off because they were spent as well. Even Man City's squad is getting to a stage of fatigue. He talks about the injuries that are taking their toll. He talks about the fact that he's got no way of resting players. Rodri's saying he's tired. These players are, are spent. Teams on the continent get winter breaks. 
Bayern Munich have been had the benefit of, of a winter break. Other clubs ac across Europe have had the benefit of winter breaks. We don't have that in the Premier League. We don't have these breaks. Um, and I think it needs looking at. Not only does it need looking at, but if you look at what happens at the end of this season, I tweeted this out last night. At the end of this season, despite the fact we've played an entire campaign of four competitions and more games than perhaps Arsenal have ever played in a, in a really long time, Saka, Rice, Havertz, Trossard, Saliba, Gabriel, Martinelli, Kivio, Zinchenko, Jorginho and maybe Jesus will finish this season and then they'll go off to play in the Euros or at the Copa America. They'll then have to go and play a tournament where most of those players playing teams that will be expected to go far, be it England, be it Brazil, these players will be expected to go far in these competitions and will not be returning to the squad until you know late June, early July. They will not be back in that squad. They may miss part of that summer tour in the States, and they probably should. We don't need to start their preseason the same as everybody else. We absolutely need to make sure that we do that. We need to make, because we can see the, the benefits of breaks for players. Fizzy says, what about the break to Dubai? You're absolutely right. That break to Dubai, which is the Premier League's attempt at a slight break, where they kind of break off the, the Premier League and half of the teams play one weekend, half the teams play the other weekend. I'm sorry, but it, it's absolutely crazy, um, the, the scheduling. And, and it's the reason why we need in the summer to really finally go out. And we're in a position now where for the first time, the first time in Mikel Arteta's tenure at a club, we are at a stage where when we sign players, we're not doing it to replace potential starters. We're doing it to strengthen potential starters. The team that we've got right now, the only real position I look at and go, yeah, that is the role that you're going to really take forwards is centre forward. Ironically, it's the trickiest position, I think, to be able to do it. Next season, we'll have Yuri and Timber coming back into the back four, who has been a massive, massive miss for us, as we know, this season. In midfields, I think we need to add another midfielder. So you've got Rice, Odegaard, and someone else. We need that box-to-box -box figure. You know, we need that Granit Xhaka, ironically. We need a Goretzka. We need a Conrad Limer type player in that midfield. And up top, we need to add another centre-forward. We need to... I mean, Nketiah coming on against Bayern Munich is a, is a really telling sign of where the, the, the squad is still at. You know, we're nearly fully fit in terms of availability, not in terms of match readiness, but in terms of availability, we've only got Timber missing. And yet Nketiah is the guy that's coming on to save us against Bayern Munich in the final stages of that game. That is incredibly telling. Incredibly telling. And that needs to change come the summer. And not only that, but Bakaya Saka needs competition. <laughs> he needs. We need to bring in competition for Bakaya Saka. We need to give him rest. We need to give him rotation. We need to give him the opportunity to recover. And whilst Man City can bench Grealish and bench De Bruyne and bench Haaland and bench other players, bench Rodri even if they need to, although he's probably the most undroppable player in their team, but they'll go out in the summer and they will be signing a midfielder because they've lost Calvin Phillips, who they had initially signed to be that depth. They will be going out into the summer and they will be adding a player in that midfield. I'm sure of it. I'm sure that they'll be going out to bring in depth for Rodrigo, um, Rodri in the midfield. So that's really key. It's perspective. It's context. We're going to move to part two very shortly. I do need to tell you about the competition that you can still win. A signed and framed Martin Odegaard shirt courtesy of Football Prizes it is a uh, match winner's choice. Um, so if you're the winner of this competition, you choose the shirt that you want. There is one Arsenal prize available, which is that signed and framed Martin Odegaard shirt, who's the only player that really covered himself in loads of glory um, last night, I felt, with his performance. So best of luck to those involved. It's a UK-only competition, as always. And the link to do so is down in today's video description. As I said, we're going to go to part two, and we're going to do it right after this. Okay, part two of the show uh, is where we tackle some of your comments, some of your points, some of your questions um, in the chat. And uh, I look forward to tackling them. And as I said, uh, if we get to a stage where you feel like you want to come on and you've got some things you want to say, maybe you want to challenge me on some of my points, challenge me on my view. I'm always open to hearing those opposition views, if indeed they are always respectful and done so in the right way. And so that for I'll open up the, the phone lines if we indeed need to get to that stage. But usually it doesn't happen, as we all know. Uh, Byron says, it's amazing that excuses of tiredness is given to Erdogan Rysaka, yet Kai, who's played almost every game, including the internationals, is not included in the conversation. I think, Byron, it's because Kai looks the least tired of those players. Stylistically, he's not that... It doesn't look like he's affected by the tiredness in the same way. 
He was chasing back. He was fighting yesterday. He made some really good runs that sadly weren't found in certain situations. Um, he was really putting in the effort in terms of defensively chasing back as well, which he had to do, which I was you know, very impressed by. But we really did lack kind of the focal point. Um, but to be honest, we lacked the service. It wasn't a lot of people saying that yesterday is where we really lacked that clinical number nine. But it's not like we really made that position peppered with opportunities so that they could then take them. We had one big chance. It didn't fall to Havertz, you know. He had a header from a free kick. And by the way, our set pieces yesterday were absolutely horrendous. Utterly horrendous. Like the final moments of the game, right? Rice has got the chance to put the ball in the box. He passes the Trossard, who loses it. We get a free kick on the edge of the box. We try and take it fast. Okay, it, it could have been an idea that worked. We got a corner from it. But the corner from Saka is despicably bad. The set pieces yesterday were absolutely dreadfully wasted. Awful, awful set pieces yesterday. Um, David says, Mikel buys Rice for tons, plays four centre-halves and two holding midfielders. You think the idea is extra protection at the back to let the forwards go and play with freedom and no handbrake. It, it's not. It, it's about trying to work out how you build a foundation of a side that is going to win a title. We don't play with two holding mids. Um, by the way, that's, that's not the correct analysis of the midfield. We play with one deeper player and one player that is designed to, to push forwards. It just happens to be that for the majority of this season, well, not even the majority of this season, because Havertz played most of those games in that number eight position for a lot of it. But Rice and Jorginho dovetailing in this game was designed so that both of them could be deeper. Um, but ultimately, we lacked the connection. When we played with two deeper players that neither of them necessarily are line breakers. I mean, Jorginho likes a ball over the top in behind sometimes. And he did play a good line breaking ball to Saka, to be fair to him, in the first half, actually. But on a consistent, frequent basis, neither of those two are the types that necessarily, I think, are going to be as progressive as, say, Thomas Partey stylistically can be. Partey was on for, you know, minutes against Bayern in the first leg, and he created the Saka chance right at the end of the game. So we we lack that, we lack that uh, penetrative... We lack that um, incisiveness that a midfielder in the summer that needs to be signed definitely um, needs to be looked at. Uh, Rahul says, uh, why does Arsenal give away, uh, team, give away team fans such good seats when we go away in European games with the least in the upper tier? I don't know, Rahul. Um, but it's not necessarily something that's too much of my concern at the moment. Uh, Fouad says, I saw a stat on Twitter that we've conceded the first goal 11 times this season and have only come back to win once against Man United in September. That's got to be a change to competing at the elite level. It has got to change. Absolutely, it's got to change. I would say that I think some of those goals have probably come quite late on in games uh, when we have conceded, I would assume, like the Villa goals, of course, that we conceded pretty late on. The Liverpool goals that we conceded in the FA Cup came pretty late on as well. I'm trying to think other games that we've conceded in. Um, I suppose Aston Villa was in the first half. The Fulham, I think, was Fulham 2-1 at half time or was it was it 1-1? I'm trying to remember desperately what happened in those games. I tried to put them to the back of my mind. I suppose the West Ham game, we conceded in the first half, didn't we? Then we had 70-odd touches in the opposition box and couldn't take any of them. Uh, Manila Creeb says, questions need to be asked about the squad building. Uh, don't renew players that take up squad space if you don't trust them. Right, this is a really easy one to explain. Um, there isn't questions about squad building because the squad building has taken Arsenal from being 11th when Arteta took over to now being successive title challenges. The only questions we have about squad building is now where do we go from here? There are no, it's, it hasn't been entirely perfect. Very, 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 very few options, if, if any. I've struggled to come up with a single team that has recruited perfectly. Even Man City make errors, and we can talk about Calvin Phillips as an obvious answer, but they could afford to make more mistakes at the level that they've established themselves at. There isn't question marks about Arsenal squad building. There's very good reasons to why Arsenal are built in the way that they've built. Some people like to look at the last two seasons and say that Arsenal have underperformed when it's come to the end of the campaign. But actually, upon the context of those seasons, Arsenal overachieved what people thought they would do during those seasons. So if you look at the signings that Arsenal made during that 2021-22 season, when Arsenal ended up trying to fight for um, fourth place in the league, when ultimately we'd finished eighth the season before the aim was get back into European football. No one had Arsenal penned for a Champions League qualification spot. Everyone was talking about loads of other sides that were potentially going to be going for that spot. Um, but it was indeed Arsenal that fought for it and just only at the end missed out. We signed White, we signed Erdegaard, we signed Ramsdale, Tomiyasu, Lokonga and Tavares. 
We signed two of those players, the Congress of Irish were there because we signed them for depth as potential projects with younger players coming in. We signed those players like Tommy Asu, Ramsdale, Odegaard and White. Odegaard definitely to be a starter, White definitely to be a starter. Tommy Asu was, of course, competition. It would turn out in the end when Saliba would return in the next summer. But Lekonga and Tavares didn't work out necessarily. And they've obviously will be sold, you'd imagine, this summer. But ultimately, Arsenal achieved what they wanted that season in 21-22 at the start of it, which is to get back into Europe. The following season in 22-23, the signings that we made, we knew that we had to go and push for that Champions League qualification. We had to qualify for the Champions League in 22-23. And so we signed players from teams that did that on a regular occasion, like Gabriel Jesus, like Alexander Zinchenko. And of course, we then signed in January a fair few other players like Trossard with the experience, Jorginho with his experience. And at that point in January, we were, of course, competing for a title, despite the fact that we'd aimed to compete and just qualify for the Champions League during that season, which we ultimately achieved and some. And then you go to this season. The signs that we've made have been designed so that we can try and push to compete again and get even closer to a title like Rice and Havertz and Timber and Raya. Now, Timber, sadly, has not been available for us this season, which is gutting, absolutely gutting. Um, and he's been a big, big miss throughout the course of this season. But ultimately, Arsenal still have managed to challenge in his absence. And they've gone as far in the Champions League as they ever have done in the last full, more than they have done in the last 14 years, despite the fact that they hadn't had their £38 million of extra boost. The reason why the squad building is not in question is because as the level rises and as every single year those expectations rise and the aims change and you go from a side that is targeting Europe to targeting Champions League qualification to targeting a title, the reason why that squad building is not in question is because the players that we signed when we were trying to qualify for Champions League are now no longer a team that is, sorry, are now no longer of the quality level required to challenge for the title. Now, you might say, well, why didn't we sign players back then that were capable of challenging for a title? Well, we weren't in the Champions League. So we were attracting a different level of player at that time. And yet, despite that fact, despite not having Champions League football when we signed Ben White, when we signed Erdegaard, when we signed Tommy Asu, when we signed um, Gabriel, players that start for us. Tommy Asu, of course, has definitely started in our biggest game this season, has been chosen to start in other huge games like Liverpool uh, at home when he locked down Salah and, uh, and Nunez. Despite the fact that we signed those players without Champions League football and without, at that time, the aim of challenging for a title, and it was the aim to get back into the Champions League, those players have been such successful signings that they have grown and developed and improved into a side that now does challenge. And if we go into next season, no one's saying Ben White should be dropped. No one's saying that uh, Erdegaard should be dropped. No one is saying um, that, uh, who's the other player I mentioned, Gabriel should be dropped because they are amongst the best players in the Premier League for their positions now. And that is where we are at in terms of Arsenal squad building. But some players that we've signed, like Zinchenko, like Jesus, players that we've signed to design to get us back into the Champions League and hopefully compete, we have now outgrown them. And so while squad building happens where you invest money in previous years, you do outgrow them when you reach this level. Arsenal are now at the position whereby we are competing. And it is the best position to be in terms of squad building. And the reason why competing for a title is the best position to be when you're squad building is because the level hasn't necessarily changed as dramatically. To go from a team that finished eighth to a team that tried to compete for the top four to a team that then tried to compete for the title, the difference in quality level of the players that you sign at those times is dramatic. The players that we signed last summer, like Havertz, who's won the Champions League with Chelsea, of course, like Declan Rice, who, of course, is an England international, one of the best midfielders in the league. The reason, and Urien Timber as well, who I hope to be a big impact next season, those signings compared to the signings that we will sign this summer, there will not be as much of a gap in quality level at the time that we sign the players from last summer to the time that we sign players at this summer. We will sign players of a similar quality of Declan Rice, we hope, this summer, and Urien Timber this summer because the level is of that of a squad that are now competing. Compare that to the signings that we made when we made them two, three years ago. Odegaard was, you know, a player that wasn't necessarily considered one of the best in the world for his position at all. Gabriel was certainly relatively unknown at the time that we signed him. You know, these were players that ultimately we didn't think would be, I didn't think would be competing for a title in two years after we signed them, but they were. And they have surprised us. And that's a credit to the recruitment. That's a credit to the coaching and the development of those players as well. And then we come on to the other part, which I'm really glad that I preempted Manila's reply to this. Let me find it. Manila followed it up and said, we gave Reese Nelson a five-year contract after getting Champions League qualification. He started once in two years. Saka is knackered because we have no backup. 
And absolutely, this is the expected follow-up question regarding why did we give Smith Rowe a contract if he's not necessarily at the required level? Why did we give Nelson a new contract despite not being necessarily at the required level right now? Why did we give Eddie Nketiah a new contract despite not being at the required level by now? And by the way, that five-year contract is a lie. It's not true. He signed until 2027 with the option of a further year. Um, so it's a four plus one, not a uh, five-year contract. Uh, Arsenal have more control over it than that. The reason why we signed those players up to new deals is because whilst we were building a squad to compete for a title and whilst we were building a squad that would then establish itself as title challengers and we were signing Declan Rice and we were signing Yuri and Timber and we were signing Kai Havertz and we were signing um, Gabriel Jesus and we were signing Zinchenko and whilst we were signing these players and spending more money than we've ever spent in any summer of any historical year of this football club despite doing that we were still having to cope with the fact that we have profit and sustainability regulations that are on our ass of last summer. The reason why we had to sign a goalkeeper on loan was because we have profit and sustainability regulations gripping hold of us and mitigating what we do. It's why we didn't sign anybody in January this year because we couldn't. We couldn't find a way to add a player of the requisite quality to be able to sign them. So you asked the question, why did we then sign those players up to new deals like Nelson, like Nketia? The reason being is because those players are about to leave on free deals. And so those players would have left, left the squad, gone somewhere else on a free for nothing. And then we would have had gaps in the squad that we couldn't then replace with signings because we didn't have the financial freedom to be able to do so and we would have had to replace them with players perhaps from the youth side and if we look at the youth team at the moment there are very few players that are ready and were ready at those times we have very few Ethan Nuneri and Miles Lewis Skelly are two of the most likely graduates that we have but despite the fact that we've hyped up players like Miguel Aziz and Brooke Norton Cuffey and other players that sadly won't make it and in the case of Aziz haven't made it is now playing in like the third tier of Spanish football that's what would have happened and so because when we've let those players when we've tried to sign those players up to new deals it's because the alternative was worse the alternative to letting Nelson go was worse the alternative to signing Ketty up to a new deal was worse that's why we did those that's why we did those deals, because we had to give them new contracts. We had to sign them up to new deals. We didn't have a choice, you know, at those times, because we couldn't bring in anything better with the financial freedom that was not given to us in those moments. So in a squad building, the squad building, if you want to point fingers at a team for squad building, it's not the team that has risen from eighth to successive title races despite spending half of what's been invested in, in Pep Guardiola's 1.2 billion investment squad that he's got. Arsenal have invested around half that in Mikel Arteta's squad and are currently two points off them in the league and going out of the Champions League at the same stage in 2024. That's where we're at. So if you want to point fingers at squad building, look at Chelsea, look at Manchester United, look at these sides, look at Spurs to a degree. If you want to point fingers at bad squad building, point to squads actually bad at squad building. Don't point to the team that has only progressed and got better and more competitive and back into the Champions League and is competing and beating Manchester City, is competing and beating Liverpool, is going to the Etihad and keeping clean sheets at the end of the season. Don't point to them. Don't point to this team. Point to the teams that are actually bad at squad building. It's about the bigger picture. If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you. I'm willing to stop around and stay for a little bit longer today uh, on the show. I'm going to throw a link into the chat box now for anybody that would like to jump on and have a conversation. Ideally, I would like to hear from people that are challenging the view. You need to be 18 plus to be able to do so, of course, as always. Um, and you need to have a webcam. Uh, most importantly, where's my plus button? There we go. 18 plus webcam required. If you would like to jump on the show and give me your thoughts, um, the link is now in the chat box. So. Join me um, whilst we wait, perhaps, for some callers. If they show up, uh, I really, really try and do encourage people to do so. But if they show up, I hope that they do. Um, uh, let's let's bring in Daniel, uh, who's gained confidence after his last showing for us, of course, as well. Daniel, you're fantastic on our last phone-in show, mate. Take yourself off mute and uh, tell me what There you we think. go. Well, it was, last night was one of those games where I woke up more angry than I did Understand. after the full-time whistle. Mm. That quick free kick, man. That quick free kick, like, the panic, it, like, 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 we, like, we, we should have took our time. And 
like like for me that that's a learning curve absolutely L- like learn to take our time like because i'd rather us take our time and like probably hit like hit the wall mm. than us rushing it and trying to look like catch Noya by surprise but last night we, we just let like let him like 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 he could have just drank cups of tea all night yeah, I want yeah. to. I, I want to talk Daniel as well about the bigger picture, of course, as well. I'm, yeah. I'm annoyed about the game. I'm annoyed about how we went. Yeah. About it. I'm annoyed at those those moments. Yeah. that you raise really good points there. You've seen the fallout. You've seen the reaction. You're in some group chats as you were telling us on the last phone show. I'm sure you got a bit of stick last night. But where, yeah. where is your head at with the bigger picture of where Arsenal are at? Bigger picture, we we need to get rid of like. The player that I really want to get rid of, but he'll be hard to shift unless and and catch Like, yeah. like, like, like people, like people say that, uh, that that they want this, this, like this guy out, this guy out, this this guy out, this guy out. But then at the same time, you've got to think of clubs who would actually want to buy them. Mm. And and also, yes, we gave an. Elketia a, a new contract, but 100 grand a week, that's not going to be easy to shift. It's not, but what I would say about the 100 grand a week, Daniel, is that is a very normal price for a player in his mid-20s at a club like Arsenal. So I understand where you're coming from, but it is yeah. a very normal wage for a player of that age at that club. Oh, that's mad. Like, well, like to mad. me, that's mad. <laughs> it is mad, but that's 2024 football for you, mate. <laughs> I know, but like, I just... I think we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot with that one. Like, I, I, I get why, mm. what, why about about squad building? Like, we need to sign them to, like, like keep them around. Mm. Like, so hopefully we can sell them in the future. Mm. But I'm just like at, at the point where with 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 some of the players, like Enketia. No more, like yeah, he, I like, agree with you. like, like, no more, like he, sh- like he shouldn't be in that s- squad, and he shouldn't be coming on for Arsenal in the eighty fifth minute as our minute. answer to that. In yeah. our, y- y- yeah, right. yeah, to be our, our savior. And last night, truth be told, I'd rather we brought on Reese Nelson. I probably would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. last night, just just so that we weren't so predictable. Mm. And a little bit of like, pace and energy and yeah, and unpredictability yeah. is a really good vibrance. Word, yeah. Vibrance. Yeah, yeah. vibrance. Yeah. We're getting the dictionary like, out this morning. <laughs> yeah, like, but, yeah, like last night, the first half w- was exactly how I wanted it to go. Mm. Like keep it tight. Look, like don't let them have any chances. The the only thing that we didn't do last night in that first half mm. was score a goal. But apart from that. The first half performance was perfect for me. Yeah, it was very really solid. Yeah, like keep it solid. But then that that goal, we just ball watched. Mm. Like, like that that in my opinion, that in my opinion is unforgivable. Like, mm. like like letting Kimmich have a free run. Yeah, really. Um, but 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 bigger picture. Like, I'm not going to call for Arteta's head because that, like, that's too extreme. Yeah, L- like, like that for me is way too like extreme. But question questions do need to be answered. Yeah, I agree. and props to uh, props to Martin Erdegaard last night. Like, yeah. well, w- well, 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 across both games, across it's both games. Yeah, he's been excellent. Yeah. But Daniel, yeah, Daniel, no. the only reason I'm cutting you off is I've got yeah. a lot of other callers as well, but I think you spoke yeah, fantastic. Yeah. You're right, questions do need to be asked. I think the performance last night was underwhelming in the second half in particular. We didn't respond to things. The questions about squad building will be hopefully answered in the summer. If they're not, we're going to have some serious conversations to be had, and I'm sure yeah. I'll catch up to you on, on future phone-in shows as well, Daniel. Thanks, mate. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem, mate. Take care. Cheers, pal. Have a good day. See you later.
Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we're going to bring in Chris uh, next, if he's ready. Just check in if, or oh, maybe his, his camera's frozen. Oh, no, he's back. Chris. How you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Yeah, you? I, I, you don't sound well. <laughs> you don't sound <laughs> too positive. Tell me, um, mate. Tell me, what's, what's, well, we're asking the question, what's the big picture here for Arsenal? The big picture for me is not our tatter out. Mm. It's back him in this transfer market. Get rid of the Deadwood and get competition mm. for Saka, Martinelli. Because Saka has been poor. Mm. I mean, for for games now, he's been poor. Do you think it's because he's tired? Yeah, I do. Because we know he's I think quality, he, right? We, we know what he's capable I think, of. I think he's going to be Michael Owen. He's going to be knackered by the time he's 24. <laughs> it's just not bad right. now. We rely on him so much. It's not right. I mean, he's 22 now, isn't he? Yeah. You can't rely on him. It's not fair on him. I'm mm, fuming. Like, I'm just fuming. 2017, I think. Was it 2017, 2018? He made his debut. He played left like back, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he played left back. He played in the Europa League under Emery on, in the wide positions. But I think it was, what, 2018 was his debut. So he's been playing senior football for six years. And now he's been playing most games for Arsenal in most seasons that he's been... You know, around. I mean, how many league appearances does he have for Arsenal? He's 165 league appearances for Arsenal and he's 22. In terms of total appearances, he's made 221 appearances at 22 for Arsenal. For, for context, Arsenal signed Declan Rice, who I think had made something like 300 already for West Ham by the time that we'd signed him, which I think Saka's probably going to get very close to um, as well. Yeah, he'd made 204 appearances in the Premier League and 293 senior appearances in total so far. So he's not far behind Rice, you know, who's, play, who's two years older than him. It's too much football for a young kid. Mm. or not a kid now, but it's too much football. Um, I was so mad when that goal went in. I just thought the defending for that goal was shocking. We played so well in defence, then that happens. Mm. And I couldn't believe it went in. I was like, Raya, if you just stood still and put your arm out, you'd have saved that. But instead, he jumped mm. around like Bambi. It was quite a quick. I think it was a case he just didn't oh. react. He, did, he couldn't react quick enough to it. In slow motion, it looks like he can probably maybe get there. Yeah. In real time, I think it was a. I don't think anyone's getting around to that editor, to be honest. Perfectly. So no, but I, I, but this, yeah, sure. this is the point. Ramsdale makes world class saves. Raya yeah. doesn't. Raya can't do yeah. world class saves. Ramsdale is a better difference. shot stopper than Raya. But Raya is. He better... saved it. It's meant to be, but I tell you what, I, and I, I think that the Raya uh, conversation is definitely worth having. I'm not going to sit here and tell people that they can't have doubts about David Raya. I'm not going to sit here and tell people that we we shouldn't have a conversation about whether we should be making that deal permanent in the summer. Because for me, I look at the other end of the field and I see Manuel Neuer. I look at the other end of the end of the field when we face Liverpool and see Allison. I look at the other end of the field when we play City and I see Edison, and I'm like, we don't have a goalkeeper that can reach that level, you know. So we don't. That, I mean, okay. Ram, I love I Ramsdale. But, you know. Yeah, go on. Sorry, Chris. Go on. Sorry, I just I love Ramsdale. No, I do, but he's not good enough. Neither of them are good no, enough, really. No, no, they're not. Not to we be. We need the world class at the level that we've talked about. No. I mean, he's probably getting on, but is it old black? Is, is, is that what it's called? At Madrid? Oh, black, uh, Atletico Madrid um, has been one of the best goalkeepers for a what very, very long time. He's thirty-one, um, which isn't. Yeah, for a goalkeeper, you've still got four or five more years. If you told me that Oblak was signing in the summer, I think I'd be pretty darn happy about that, to be honest. I don't think that'll happen. But, uh, <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> but then, happen. I suppose the question, we signed but... Petr Cech, you know, from Chelsea at the time when we signed Petr Cech, was still considered one of the best Premier League goalkeepers and yet couldn't replicate that for us. So... Oh, in his first season, really... he was... For his first season, he was good. He was you can't say he didn't replicate it. He saved us a lot in his first season. Hmm. I mean, then I was out in his fourth year now, isn't he? Uh, yeah, it'll, be, four it'll years be five in. years in December is what it'll be. Yeah. And I remember seasons ago when Wenger was still there, Peter White, Eddie Howe. Mm. Mm. Well, what's he done? Graham Potter at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I remember having to bat away Graham Potter conversations a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying stick with him. I don't really like him, but stick with him because he is the best we can be. Yeah. I, I, he's not. He's not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell people you have to like Mikel Arteta, you know, because I know as a character, as a profile, he's not always going to be the most liked, and I absolutely get that. But as long as we're, as I always say, as long as Arsenal are moving in a positive direction, 
and are getting closer towards their ultimate goal of winning a Premier League, of winning a Champions League, then that's fine. It's, it's when we regress when I'll start to be like, I'm not sure this is the right guy, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think... Final word, Chris, just before I move on. Martinelli. Martinelli, I think we should replace him now, get better now. Really? He's not, he's not the world-class player. Well, he's not yet. If he's we don't replace 20, him, 23, I think. If we don't replace him, then we need to get someone as good as him and alternate hmm. them. More than happy to do that. It's just and Saka as well. Now. Well, and Nico Saka Williams. Well. Nico Williams, very versatile player, young player, doing a lot of good things. Just won the Copa del Rey as well with Athletic Club. So yeah, and a reasonable release clause, I think, around forty-three million pounds. So not a not a bad suggestion at all, Chris. I, I always a pleasure to chat with you, mate. I'm going to jump onto my next caller, but thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. Speak to you soon. Uh, massive, uh, I was going to say congratulations to Chris. I know I had massive thanks uh, to Chris. Uh, Bobby's up next. Uh, how you doing, Bobby? Good, you well? Take yourself off mute, mate, and uh, and I'll be able to hear what you're saying. Hi, Tom. How you doing? You okay? For considering, not too bad, mate. Uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I didn't agree with the David Raya comments. Then I think go for it. Yeah, we can we can all say there's better keepers out there, but there really isn't. So you've got to bear in mind they don't always adjust. So for example, mm. people have the same argument with Onana. I think David Raya's been brilliant for us. And you've mm. got to bear in mind the context that goes behind signing David Raya as well. So his temperament's brilliant. If you see him in interviews, you see his team controlling. When it comes to corners, he's been such a pivotal part. So we can all mm. say Ramsdale's theatrics made his saves look a lot better than they actually were. But David Raya has been a brilliant signing. I think... Part of the reason we've dropped points this year has been that uncertainty that was developed by um, Arteta's comments about, oh, we might do squad rotation for keepers. And obviously, you've got to bear in mind, he's adjusted to a new club as well. So it's his first season. I think mm. he's done very little wrong. If, if you consider that was a quarter final for I, Champions League. I don't League. think that's unfair, Bobby. All I would say is that I don't, I, I'm, I struggle at this moment in time to see if he is going to be of the level of Eredison's, Allison's of this world. And I think that if Arsenal want to compete for titles, that we need a goalkeeper of that standing, if that makes sense. I understand where you're coming from, but when mm. Edison and Allison signed for Man City and Liverpool, respectively, they weren't deemed as the world's best either. So you've got to bear in mind they've point. gone. They've gone through the gears as well with them. So we've got to have that. I never thought Ramsdale was that guy. I never had their confidence with Ramsdale. And you've got to bear okay. in mind, our set-piece coach was Brentford's ex-set-piece coach. So he's seen something yeah. in David Raya. And David Raya's story is incredible. If you look at where he's come from, in yeah. terms of coming from Southport, which is about mm. 15 minutes away from me, to mm. where he is now at Arsenal's, unbelievable. It's mm. that, that appetite and that desire. And when you hear him in interviews, he... He's an incredible goalkeeper, and I think he will go through those gears, whether he hits Edison's or Allison's. But they're two very freakish goalkeepers that have. Mm. How many is there of that level, Edison and Allison, that have actually changed the goalkeeping landscape? Very few. So we're asking a heck of a lot if we're expecting to improve on David Raya. I think that. I think that's. Um, I think we should all be a bit more. I won't say grateful, but I think he's a great pick. Understanding, maybe, is the word. Yeah, I, I, I think it was just a point raised because obviously we're looking at positions in the squad. We're saying, where can you find, where can we upgrade? And I just think that, you know, obviously Raya has, there's been a few question marks this season, um, but you're right, you know, he's, he's in his first season and, and absolutely should deserve patience. I think you raised some good points about the fact that when Edison and Allison first came in, there were questions. I remember they made mistakes quite high profile. I remember them being little clips online of the mistakes that they'd made in their first season. So, you know, I think you've raised a very, very fair point. Um, talk to me before we go on to our next call as well, about because I know you were, you were tuning in before we talked about Raya, about the bigger picture and why you called in. Yeah, so essentially, I think part of the... I heard your comments regarding the youth setup as well. And I think yeah. if our youth setup isn't where Liverpool... And, I think what's taken Liverpool and City so far this year has been their youth setups in terms of having that flexibility, a Agreed. bit more yeah. of a gung-ho attitude in terms of bringing in people that, like, some of these people that they've brought in, they, they weren't the proven article prior to that, but there's been a bit more confidence and faith given to them by the manager. So I think what we need to do is, there's people, like, within that youth setup, we might not say they're a finished article or anything like that, but even giving them a six, seven-minute stint like Pep does or 
um, Klopstone or United to an extent, none of those players, realistically, when you look at our youth standings, we're, we're not a million miles away from United no. and people like that. So we're very competitive. So there's, I mean, there's no just reason. Top of the, I think they were top of the table, West Ham 8-1. So obviously there's yeah. talent there, you know, without um, a doubt. And that's what I mean. So if there's youth there that's of that ability for those other teams to introduce them in, mm. we should definitely be introducing them. So to the point whereby Sack has looked, I'll be honest with you, I think each and every season there's probably a 15-game drop-off um, or something along those lines, whether that's to fatigue. And that fatigue's only going to get worse because we're only going to feature more in Champions League. We're only going to mm. feature, obviously, got Euros coming up. So fatigue's going to become a lot more problematic. Same with the likes of Martinelli. So, yeah, we, we, we need to... Sh- I don't think we can improve on either of those two. So Martinelli and Saka, I think... They can improve personally, but I don't think we can improve on them. I think that anybody who says that you can improve on Martin Elias Sackers, uh, I just don't agree with. So if you, if you gave yeah. either of those two wingers to any other team in the world, I guarantee you they improve that team 100%. Mm. Mm. So I it's, think we, it's about finding competition for those players. Uh, absolutely, finding those competition. Mm. But the point is also looking at we need to integrate more of our youth. I do think our squad building's not been great. I think there's been... We've got to bear in mind when our... Really? Because tattoos... I think that the squad building... The, the question marks of a squad building is is strange. I think the criticisms of squad building sometimes lack content. I don't know if you heard my monologue before I opened up the phone lines about it. But I, I think that the context around squad building is if you look at where we were when Arteta took over and the fractured group of players like that we had to move on, like Aubameyang in the end and Lacazette in the end, and obviously to me, £72 million pounds worth of Pepe that Arteta didn't want, you know, David Luiz, players like this, you know, and I know that he kept some of them for a season because he, he needed that experience at the start, but he knew when the time was right to move them on. I think that the way in which w- how we've built this team in four years from where it was to now, and if you actually look at the wage bill, and I know Mike, who's one of our callers, waiting, we, we were talking on a finance show, you know, about the wage bill of last season. The wage bill of last season was slightly less than the team that I think Arteta won the FA Cup with. Mike, nod for me down below if I'm right about that. I think, yeah, I am. Um, so it shows you kind of the squad building way where we've come in that time. Do you know what I mean? Where I'm coming from is the imbalance in signings. So when you um, weigh up how many fullbacks we've signed and how many of them have faltered, I understand fullbacks are very important to the modern game. So the mm. likes of Pep will constantly sign fullbacks. And if you count up how many fullbacks he signed in comparison to any mid- other positions, very large. Mm. And I think Arteta has done that, but he's got to understand we've not got the same. Um, transfer rigour as they have. So when it comes well, down we have to missed Timber for most of this season, who could have been massive absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I think moving forward, I think what we've got to look at is we've got to integrate more youth because a with the PSR rules coming in as well, that that's an essential big piece of it. So anybody that says, mm. "Oh, we've re-signed Reese and any any Eddie etc." to new contracts. You've got to bear in mind that's a 100% profitable deal as soon as you do move them on as well. So that impacts your ability to spend a lot more as well. So re-signing youth players and being able to sign them on and sell them on at a profit, that that's where you generate your money from. That's what Chelsea have been looking at doing and they've got an abundance of players to do that with. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, I think there's definitely a few flaws in where we're at. Am I an Arteta out guy? Not really. I, I I don't think there's anyone else that could improve upon what he's doing. I I, I think there's a few things that we need to really sharpen up with this summer. That Agreed. Aston Villa game this week's been devastating for every single Arsenal fan. Mm. Every mm. single Arsenal fan. I was heartbroken over the weekend, and same again now. It's it's been sickening, but I'm hoping that we can use this as some genuine momentum and plug those gaps and integrate some youth and maybe that experience at Alliance yesterday will give us a bit more maturity for next year as well. That's what I'm hoping for. I think you've spoken really, really well, Bobby. I've raised some really important points. And uh, th- is this your first time calling in on the show? It is, yeah, Tom. Absolutely smashed it, mate. So thank you for coming on. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Have a nice day as well, guys. You too, Bobby. Okay. Have a good one. Yeah. Um, as appreciation to Bobby. Uh, Mix is next up on my list. Uh, let's get Mix on. How you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Take yourself off mute and then I can hear what you're saying. There we go. Lovely What's stuff. What's going on, man? 
Appreciate oh, you having me on, bro. It's beautiful, may I say. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I spent, I spent a decent amount of money on it, so it made a lot of music it. on it. It was worth it. Um, bigger picture, mate. Tell me where your head's at. I just, I, I really like, so I'm, I'm a pretty optimistic person just in general, but, mm. you know, I, I, I just, I don't understand the, like, in, in 2024, this is the second game that we've lost, right? And it's, it is dread doom for everybody just mm. just just like the world's implode and it, I, I get it you know we're two points off the top out of the champions league to Bayern again but we haven't been in the champions league for however long and i just i really don't understand being now not even arguably just factually top 10 team in europe right mm. and yeah. people are acting like it's Oh my God! It's the like we were finishing eighth, yeah. laughing stock yeah. of the Premier League banter club yeah. banter ball. Yeah. I I really don't understand why everybody explodes when we lose a game. It's it's standards, I, mate. You need to raise yeah. your fucking standards, is what we're told. Sure, sure, yeah, raise the standards, fine. But <laughs> let's look back four four years that you can you can only do stuff that we've done in the last four years in FIFA. You know what I mean? In in sure. career mode, Impressive. and um. You know how many times you know you can talk about things that we've gotten wrong. You can talk about things, decisions in game, maybe that you know Arteta has gotten wrong, whatever. But I just all of the things that you get right, you get no credit for, and then mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. only get screamed about. You know, it only gets screamed about the things that go wrong. So for me, I I, I don't really get it. And um, you know, I was listening to uh, to the the goalkeeper conversation. I was I was of the the idea that for a very long time I don't think Neuer's actually as good as people think he is. I mean, I it's well he's it, getting on a bit he's, now. He's been around well, now, for like, now, yeah, two centuries. I think. It, well, no, now, yes, of course. Like I, I'm talking like yeah. prime Bayern. I'm talking, you know, Boateng in front of him. You know, hmm. like these, Ten you know, these older. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. He had an amazing defense in front of him, right, and. Every great goalkeeper needs a great defense in front of him. We have arguably, maybe, the best defense in Europe over maybe. the course of the last, you know, couple of months. So, yes, um, Rea maybe can make a couple more saves here or there, or he can do whatever. He's been been here for a year, so we yeah, got to yeah. give him a second. We got to mm -hmm. give him a second to kind of bet in a little bit. Um, I just the the my my big picture thing, I guess, is just. I just I don't think with any other manager or any other team you can turn a team around the way that we have in the last four years. Yeah, like name me another team that's made this much of a change. Well, like, this is like, this is the thing, mix uh, because at the start, take last season, right? I remember uh, that the thing was, oh look, Eddie Howe's come into Newcastle and he's taken to the Champions League in in a year. Look how long it took Arteta to do that. On this year, it was, oh, look, Unai Emery's come in and he's already got Aston Villa playing, you know, to a potential uh, Champions League qualification standard. Newcastle qualify for the Champions League, sure. Congratulations. You finished bottom of your group and now you're struggling to get back into the Champions League this season. Mm -hmm. Unai Emery this season might get Aston Villa into the Champions League. And if he does, it's a brilliant achievement, just like it was for Eddie Howe to get Newcastle back there. But I'm not trading places with them. No. no, because this Arsenal team has been put into a position where it's not fell off after it competed for a title last season. It's not fallen off. It established itself as a title challenger and has got the potential and certainly the resources, I think, to go perhaps closer than it did. I hope it's enough. I'm really struggling to see it will be the ultimate goal this season. But I certainly think that we will be looking back at this season and think, yeah, we were closer this year to the title than we were last year. Mm -hmm. it, there's progression. I mean, you know, you can you can talk about flying too close to the sun, right? Like these teams, they get, you know, they have one fantastic year. You know, we could have very easily, you know, you know, maybe we finish we finish eighth, and then we finish fifth. All of a sudden, we finish second. We make one or two decisions a little bit different, and then all of a sudden, we're falling right back down the table and you know finishing tenth again. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of steady progression i think ev if you don't think we've gotten better each year over the last four years then you need to revisit your opinion because i i, I just i i, I struggle to find the politest a, a, way anyone's put that <laughs> <laughs> look you know i i'm trying to i'm trying to change the opinion of americans on uh english soccer so um yeah look man i 
I, I struggle. I, I really struggle to find a, a, a situation where you can be seriously detrimentally unhappy with how the season is going, considering the change that we had at the new year. You know, all of a sudden, yeah, football. Sorry, not soccer. My bad. Uh, no, it's, I, don't, I really, I really <laughs> know that I know about it. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I got mad English friends that always, uh, always. Put uh, me I, up it really that. bothers me when you get people like Sam saying <laughs> it's it's football. Like it's like, they call it soccer. Yeah, it's totally, deal with it. Yeah, like, sorry. They, yeah, they call it cilantro. I'm not moaning yeah. about it. Like it's really, yeah, honestly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, look, I, you know, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm really struggling to it again. Like top, top eight teams in Europe, and you know. <sighs> You can't make as many. We still are a young team. I think there's this notion yeah. now that like, oh, we've had two years, so two years experience. We should be able to put that into the, you know, we should be able to put that into the team. And then all of a sudden, we're not young anymore. But they're still still really young. Just because they had a couple of years experience and they've had a couple of you know slaps across the face, as you put it before, mm. you know, you still got to give them a chance to put that into effect, right? So it's the first year in the Champions League. Got to give them a chance to fail and then, mm. you know, push on. How many years did it take Pep to, you know, win the Champions League with City? You know, that, that, right. Yeah, that, that you know, that, that, uh, um, that point's been beaten to death now, but, you know, yeah, it's still it's a good true. point. It's you still know, true. Exactly. It's still true. hundred percent. Mix. The only reason I'm wrapping up is because I've got a lot of other callers as well, but I think you spoke fantastically well. And maybe you brought me back down to earth with the goalkeeper thing a little bit. I think it's right to have doubts. It's right to have asked questions, but I think you raised some really good retorts as did Bobby as well earlier ago. So for thank sure. you for that. Yeah. Thanks, appreciate Mick. you, man. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do, bro. <laughs> thank you so bad. Cheers. Uh, right. Lovely stuff. Let's bring on uh, Asni Lamptey uh, next. Uh, am I pronouncing that correctly? Just yes. Checking. Yes. Um, I did. I'm the Don't second one them. of the Lamte, you know, the the Brighton uh, Tariq, player. Lamte. Yeah. Yes. Nice. That is how we name the first called Lamte, and then the second is my name is Lamte. Lamte. So you stretch right. it, yeah. Actually, Education. I'm in China. I've been watching oh, you really, for really? years now. Yeah, nice I've been one. watching you for and Thanks, I always man. get to watch our games late at night. So I woke oh, up no longer ago from my heartbreak yesterday <laughs> yeah, but, indeed everybody else is yeah. tell me Lamte, what the uh, bigger picture is for you at the moment the bigger picture is contest we have to add contest here you know let me mm. start from ateta it seems like people are quick to jump not only on ateta it's the football club arsenal right let me give you this contest um pep from Barca to bayern yeah it took him four years four years at bayern mm. he couldn't win the champions league yeah. In that league, he signs the best players. He pick and choose who he wants to sign. He couldn't. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a failure. He came to City. It took him about seven to eight years. Mm. Mourinho, I'm talking about the great here. Mourinho mm. went to Madrid, had mm. the best players at his disposal. He couldn't win the Champions League with them. Club had to come from... Dortmund, then Liverpool for some mm. years before he was able to. What I'm trying to say here is we, especially I'm talking to the Arsenal fan base, we talk about mm. challenging. Anytime I hear somebody say we should challenge, I ask, what, what do you mean by challenge? Because yeah. if you're challenging for something, you will reach a level that you fall short. So even if we qualify, let's say we qualify to the uh, semi-final, still people will not be happy. Mm. We are more or less second. Oh yeah, if now. we'd if we'd have gone through and lost to Real Madrid, then been like, oh well, should have exactly. Won. So <laughs> yeah. I always say yes. Emotionally, I'm broken. I'm hurt. I want us now to win almost every game. But at the end of the day, contest is always important. Look at the progress of the team. People, rival fans are quick to say Ateta eight eight. They don't mention trophies. They use that to get under our skin. But for yeah. me, where I'm coming from, I always use contest. Compare the team uh, um, City. Look at City's team. They got, they got knocked out yesterday. Imagine we got knocked out through penalties. Mm. They have the experience, according to fan, the fan bases, right? They've won the Champions League. They are currently the champions. And they couldn't win at home. Mm. So I always say, yes, you can be disappointed. You can... You can Ask questions. Oh, why? Why did this player wasn't that committed? You can you can ask those questions, but at the end of the day, you have to understand they are they are not robots. They are human beings. Some of them. I'm not making excuses for them. If you've played the game before, 
they are, some of them are playing through pain. We have mm. to get from that angle. Yes, I want us to win. Secondly, we, we always want to look at players, players, players. I asked, you were talking about the goalkeeper situation. Yeah, I, I don't want to get bogged down too much on that, but, but go on. Yes, yeah. yes. I, but the question is, can you name me three or two keepers that we can go and sign today that is better than um, um, David? Uh, Diogo Costa at Porto would be one. Um, I'd try and tempt Mike Magnon from Milan uh, as another. Um, if a black wants to leave Atletico Madrid at 31, potentially uh, there's another. But th there's not loads. And if you are, they're going to be very expensive. Gregor Kobel uh, at Dortmund, 26 years of age. Yeah. Um, but okay. it's, it's very hard. You know, it's, it's very difficult. Yeah. So we agree it is going to be difficult. Is it? For me, I want the quality of, like, I don't say backup, but replacement. If Pate is not there, I'm a Ghanaian. Yeah, I'm a mm. Ghanaian living in China. I love Pate, but mm. I want us to get a replacement. When, 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 let's say, Rice is not available, we know the one coming in. We don't have any issues. With, that is the level I want us now to reach. Agreed. Then, when we get knocked out at quarterfinal in the Champions League, I can ask serious questions. But not when you bring, let's say, yesterday, he changed, brought in Jesus, and then later uh, um, Eddie, Eddie in Ketia. Mm. Mm. Let's be frank. The level drops. Oh. It drops. Yeah. It drops. So it, it should tell you something. We have a very, a very good first 11. But then the rest, and the, the rest, too, when you look at them, they are, they've not been available. Majority of them, name them. Smith Rowe, how many mm. games has he played? He's been mm. injured. Yeah. Party. We that is why I always say contest is always important. Mm. Look at Man City's team. Yet they couldn't qualify against mm. quote unquote an inexperienced Madrid team. Because when you look at those players, a lot of them are young. Yeah. So mm. for me, like I said, I'm I'm disappointed, but we move. Because I want us to challenge. I want to see my team in the quarterfinal, semifinal, win the competition. I want to compete to win the league. That is what I want to see. Are now. we competing? We... Yes, we are. Then there you go. That that's 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 all that's you need. All. Exactly. Yeah. Because you, they, you're not entitled. We're not entitled to anything. You know, exactly. you're not entitled to win anything. But what I want this team to do is to challenge, and that's what we are doing. You know, we are challenging for these. People might say, "Oh, but we." We've dropped off in the end of the last two to three seasons. But the ironic thing is, in the last two seasons in particular, when we finished fifth, no one expected us to finish in the top four. Yeah, we very nearly did. No one expected us to finish in the top four last... Uh, sorry, no one expected Arsenal to compete for the title, but they did. So they were looked at as disappointments in the end because we didn't reach what turned out to be a bit of a changing goal because we'd overachieved people's early expectations. But... It, it's very Tom, easy to look pessimistically Tom, back on that. Very quickly, Lance, say as I go on. Yeah, you cannot drop off from uh, um, eight to second and you're still yeah. second. It is not a drop yeah. off. Mm. I've never seen somebody who drops off from eight to second. <laughs> I've never seen yes. it before. <laughs> Tripping their way up the league. Yes, indeed. Anyway, thanks for having me. I'm really Absolute pleasure, friend. I'll try Absolute to join pleasure. anyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, mate. I will speak to you soon, I'm sure. Thanks yeah. for jumping on. Thanks, Labte. Uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, another fantastic microphone as well. <laughs> I'll listen, but he's already standards, people, and he don't want us to get a microphone. Uh, I know he's up very, very late in the night, so I'm going to bring him on and put him out of his misery very quickly. It's our good friend, Magic Mike. How are you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Doing all right. Doing all right. Missing you, and, uh, and Gunnar Palooza is not the same without you. I know. I actually uh, wore the mate. shirt yesterday uh, on, on the show. Um, maybe I shouldn't. Apparently, it was a bad omen because whenever Gunnar Palooza happens, we drop points. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's absolutely it's ridiculous. Show. It's the second straight year that basically we're all just going to be hanging out miserable about, about Arsenal's recent performance. I mean, we, we just can't buy a good stretch leading into one of these events, but... Uh, but yeah, it's uh three fifteen in the morning here, um, and uh, I'm still still awake, still morning. Uh, the end of of our Champions League campaign. Morning and uh, yeah, a morning early in the morning. It's uh, it's got mixed feelings about it. A, I I just 
I can't stand the misery that seems to be going yeah. around. I, I, I've just used it's a coping tonight mechanism to for some. And I don't understand that. I, I was talking. I was. Um, hang, uh, I, I had dinner and, and spent most of the afternoon with uh, with a few folks uh, that you probably know, Tanner and and um, and, and Ryan. And um, mm. we were just talking about that. Like my coping mechanism when Arsenal are poor is to be sad, take a nap hide mm. <laughs> stick my head in the sand because I, yeah. I just why would you want to be that angry and upset all the time like it's absolutely yeah you know i i've old i've lived through some stuff like like negative energy isn't my friend so i mean and 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 if i could control anything that was going on with arsenal if i had any influence whatsoever other than the the occasional you know i'm at a game and i'm making noise and i'm trying to create atmosphere and pump the boys up but like sitting in in, in the globe in chicago watching the game on television I have no control over it. So why I, I'm not saying don't get invested in the result. I'm not saying don't, mm. you know, it's not right to get upset. They, I mean, everybody's opinion is valid. And, and I mean, the last three callers since I've tuned in uh, absolutely killed it. Great, amazing opinions. These guys haven't been calling into shows or doing podcasts before. They're fantastic. I gotta, mm. I gotta compliment your, your, your viewers. But, They're a good uh, bunch. You know, audience <laughs> it, it is man i'm telling you 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 built the, I've, I've said it a million times the community you built is is fantastic and that's the whole thing like that's what it came down to is my coping mechanism especially when you've got a weekend like this where you know and i don't know if a lot of your viewers know what's going on but it's it's another one of these kind of meetups where 100 200 people get together from all different cities different countries and uh, and we're all in chicago this week you were uh, Tom was here last year. We did a podcast with uh, w with some great people, and um, you know it's it's basically about celebrating Arsenal, watching the games, but not like getting too invested in them. And and it's kind of a salvage because the next yeah. four days are going to be fun. It's the lowest point in the season for sure. Hey, last year it was three three Southampton. The game was the worst bit of the weekend. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, oh, the know. game is always the worst bit of the weekend. It's yeah. the game is always the worst bit of the summer tour. The game is always the worst bit of the weekend. Yeah. It, 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 you know, it's it's and and uh and thank God for that. Uh mm. you talk about coping me mechanisms and uh you know, I just feel sorry for people who their literal only exposure to Arsenal, the only part that Arsenal play in their life is a massive one that is purely based on the result of the game. That said. Which is, no, no, no. I, I, it is sad. And it's why I always start off shows these days after defeats or points saying, you take yourself away from it if you're struggling. You know, you need to detach. You need to learn that the football yeah, is it's a part of life, but it's not a way of life for me anymore. It used to be. Football absolutely used to be my way of life. It's what got me up in the morning. It's what dictated my entire philosophy and mood but i've learned that it's part of life and that being football being a way of life actually detracts from my mental health and so i've it's, learned to well, it's, it's also it's also called getting married <laughs> that also happens yes <laughs> because, because you're not going to be married for long if you continue reacting the same way i, I became an react. uncle for the fourth time last night actually so oh, uh, beautiful by the way uh, you know yeah. who else had a baby uh, last week jim and ellie Oh, yeah, of course they did. Yes, yes, I do need to message you. Yes. Uh, I wanted that to happen during the, the Chicago Gooners. Yes, so. I wanted that to happen during the live podcast uh, on Saturday. But <laughs> Imagine. But they, Imagine. They had other plans. Um, um, so we, Mike, we talk about go on, last, last point before I move on. Yeah. A lot of what I was going to say was said in the last three callers, either by you or by the callers. But the, the one thing I just want to double down on is the the – I mean, we talked tonight – at dinner what could possibly convince you that arteta is no longer the man uh and for me there's regression. two things regret it, that's the exact word we use is regression and you know even if we were to somehow finish third by a point just because of the nature of the of the of the title race this season we're we're playing better football uh capitulating at the end is a little bit difficult if if we end up getting 13 14 points out of 18 and City end up walking it by five or six points over us, that's going to feel really, really disappointing. But I still feel like we're making progress year over year. Um, the Champions League going to be a year behind on progression because we just don't have the learning experience from the previous okay. year and from the year before. But, um, you know, either that or he loses the dressing room, which I can't see happening for two, three, four seasons of, uh, of misery. Trust me, from um, speaking to people in and around the club, speaking to some of the players, they yeah, you would not be more... 
uh, like committed to this coach. Like, there's no question about the dressing room at all. And and having that is worth, you know, whatever the best possible football coach that you could hire would be. They're not gonna have. They're not gonna jump through a brick wall for that guy the way that they would for Arteta. And and at this mm. point, that's all you can ask out of this young and and growing team. So, uh, it's it's frustrating in the moment. But uh, but over the long run, I'm still seeing uh, progression and improvement. And and you know what? <laughs> if he regresses, I'll still love Arsenal. That's, that's yeah, indeed all Arsenal's the one. Always, no one man is bigger than than Arsenal. But thank you, Mike. Appreciate your time as always. Pleasure to see you. Talk soon, buddy. Talk soon. Uh, lovely stuff. You can find Mike, uh, Mike's podcast, of course, uh, at the Gunas Pod. You can find a brilliant charitable cause, Gunas versus Cancer, where you can donate plenty of money to a brilliant um, campaign raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, so please do go and check that stuff out. And if you're in the Chicago area, of course, or you're able to get there over the course of the next weekend of Wolves, please go check out Guna Palooza uh, as well, which is a fantastic event for those based in North America to try and come together. And uh, and I say watch Arsenal together, as me and Mike said, it's the worst part of the week and the watching Arsenal but it's everything surrounding it which is brilliant so go and check it out um we have got one two three four five six if you are down below and you're waiting to come in I'm going to endeavor to get you on because uh, there's six of you left I've closed the phone lines for everybody else but the what those that are waiting so I can see Abby Himanka Basha Alif uh Lai and Vijay uh, I'm going to get all of you on so please stick around uh Vijay is up first uh, how you doing Vijay how you doing good you well take yourself off mute and I can hear you hey how are you doing can you hear me not bad all things considered, not bad. Talk to me. What's okay. the bigger picture for Arsenal? Uh, actually, I'm in San Francisco. I'm actually in the same similar time period as, uh, like... Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> I should have no, spotted okay. in the background. Yeah, yeah I, I just want, like, I feel like this is my therapy session at this point of time with you. <laughs> so with Arsenal. Mm. So I'm just like... Well, it's, think... it's, it's a hundred pound an hour, just a heads up. My <laughs> All right, I'm cool. relatively send me your Venmo request, I think, after this. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. Uh, I, I think... It's a mixed thing. I think I'm definitely disappointed about the fact that the way we played, that was more disappointing than the fact that we went out. Uh, because at the end of the day, the the narrative that has been set a lot before this match and everything was actually that, oh, Bayern is like is doing playing like shit, and uh, in the in the Bundesliga, in they got in the domestic tournament, so there is no way anybody other than uh, Arsenal is not a like there, there's no way, and if we lose, then that's all on us. Like you know, that's the narrative that is being said. And I'm like, guys, we, we have none of our players have actually hardly. I think two or three players have actually played in the Champions League uh, mm. of the entire set. Uh, maybe I think they did Gabriel play in Leon. Maybe the in team the that started League. last night. It would be. Um, oh, did one have done a substitute here? Odegaard, Havertz, Jorginho. Is that it? Of the starting eleven. And starting 11, yeah, I think so. On, and then yeah, maybe Gabriel with well. Leon was there, but that's about it. Uh, mm. but, but the point I'm trying to make is that the naivety of the team was so clear to see the way they play. It felt like they were not in, like, they fell out of place. That's the best way. And the best way, uh, this is something that I think earlier people mentioned as well, the that final free kick, there is, I've never seen a team try to do that in the 90, 93rd and a half oh, minute. so naive. Yeah, and and I'm like, even if say the goal was given, a, I I was hoping that the referee goes like, oh, I didn't blow the whistle, bring it back, <laughs> but they already like ba like kind of destroyed that chance opportunity there. So I think it was done. So the uh, we would never know. And on top of that, I'm just like, and I think that thing was quickly taken by Saka. I get it that we have not scored from a free kick like in three years. Uh, like wow. I think last one was uh, in, by Odegaard against Odegaard Burnley. Burnley. Yeah, I think that was the last one. So I think from a big picture perspective, I'm like, people need to just uh, understand that, like, Champions League is a different ball game. Uh, like, it's uh, it, it's it, the most important thing about this, I feel like, is the fact that somehow everybody seems to have forgotten that our best player that was from last year was Partey, uh, one of our best players, I would say. And there was a, there was a charge wherein, like, if... Man City had not won the treble or whatever. They were still like saying who's the better midfielder, party or Rodri. That was a conversation mm -hmm. that was being had. Maybe yeah. not if like very impactfully, but like Rodri is like out of the uh, scale definitely better. But still, mm -hmm. there was a conversation there. I would say, and that guy plays three games compared to thirty-three games last year, and 
uh, anybody would have nobody is thinking. I don't think Shaka is going to leave if they knew that they're going to lose party for the rest of the season. Mm, yeah. Because, I mean, we lost two of the two of the three midfielders we had. We've brought in yeah. Rice, obviously, right. who's a fantastic player, but it's that's a lot of change in such a key area. Yeah. Right, and also the, I think uh, Timber would have inverted probably from left to center, and that would have actually brought in a better defensive uh, like mindset, like in like winning game balls and stuff like that. And I just feel like everybody seems to have forgotten the fact that like you know we lost a big player in Pare for like all of the most of the year. And we have also lost a like an important signing in Timber for the rest of the year too. And yet we are competing uh, at like the highest levels available, reach the Champions League uh, quarterfinals. Uh, and everybody would, I, the few people that I've talked to, everybody's like, "Oh, you're making excuses for these uh, guys and stuff like that." And I'm like, "Do you think like we were like in the finals like every single year last year, and then this year is the one that we are like, oh, we couldn't get through? No, mm -hmm. it's the first time we we're getting getting here." And and on top of that, I'm just like, if you look at the t uh, most of the signings that we've had, I, I I still believe that we had one of the best growth curve compared to any other club, and I have hardly seen any club after that being able to replicate that same process. Like mm. they like people have been trying to like Chelsea tried to replicate it, Man United has been trying to replicate it. And nobody's been able to really do it as efficiently as we have, where the idea is to reduce the amount of losses that we have in like signing players and to maximize the amount of players. Mm -hmm. Now, from a big picture perspective, I would definitely say, uh, like, we have to keep grinding. That's just it. Like, there is no other opportunity. Uh, I think last year was about bringing in some experience in Zinchenko and uh, Gabriel. This yep. year was about trying to get more uh, because we realized that we are actually like short in like our squad depth that this was what actually created and that's this shows that like even after losing our best midfielder and our prop de most definitely the starting left back and we still were able to somehow manage to like keep up with the competitions and like being able to do it uh the reason why everybody's lethargic right now is shown because uh, is the squad depth that is a problem but that can be resolved in two different ways like which is like a, a addition of quality is now what is required and and uh and this is a question i was i was on um i think i was in the the canon podcast uh mm. with george and few people and i was texting mm. I, mean, I was uh messaging in there and i was telling him the same thing but i do not think this would have happened if shaka was there because he was much more of a calming presence in certain at least from last season onwards like he was actually calming people down, not to like stress yeah, about consistent everything. figure. Yeah. Yeah. So and his main thing was availability. Like he was like hard, almost always available yeah. for every. Yeah. Match. He's only had one injury really for us. That was that knee injury he suffered. Like, I think it was against right. Man United. He suffered last year, um, and yeah. I think he came back faster than expected, and then continued. Yeah, he did. And so it's uh, from I think next year, all transfers has to be like star signings. I would say. Uh, oh, without was, question. Yeah, every yeah. signing we make has it to be an arguable yeah, starter. I, I, think, yeah. and I, I think there's many people who are... Other than a backup keeper, maybe. That's the only one. Yeah. Right, because I feel like we don't have that one guy... Like what De Bruyne did today for... Yeah, like, I'm starting know. to lean more into this. I think Alex definitely, yeah. from the different knock, raised a, a good point. I, I think we've got players with potential to have those moments, like Saka and Odegaard and Rice, who's had... They've had big moments, but we don't have a... Talisman, like a, I went, I went when like a talisman. Yes, mm -hmm. Saka, you look at and say that's Arsenal's talisman, but he's still twenty-two. We don't have like a De Bruyne, you know. We don't have that that key like uh, Real Madrid. We see Vinny Junior and Bellingham, but Modric, you know, players like this in those moments, we don't have those exp that experienced world-class figure in this team. And yeah. I don't know if we're going to sign that necessarily in the summer, um, but, the, because but I think. It can be cool. a combination. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm just saying, no, like, it can be a combination of things. Like, in the sense, like, the the my dream summer would be an Isak, Rodrigo, and a Kimmich, because that would I like love Kimmich. Be, he was so he was the best player across the two legs. Exactly. Easily. So, the, but, but yeah. more than more than anything, what I just noticed was that he was not randomly running around everywhere. He he had measured every single yeah. move was so yeah. measured because he still played the deep uh, like defensive way 
and and that's the other thing about like people who say that oh we haven't progressed i'm like this is the team that we lost to 10 to twice i think or no 10 10 yeah, to and like 10 uh, 5 1 three times we lost before yeah. these two games. and then yeah. but the one before that was a 2 0 victory i think that 2 0 victory away from home but we were 3 yeah. 1 down in the first leg yeah. yeah yeah so it was like interesting to but and that that team in both legs played defensively against us like mm. and oh, i'm like Ryan played they didn't play they like, didn't, for themselves and I think they played really based upon how we play Right, yeah. and Thierry Henry played it be- said it best in today's. Uh, I was watching CBS Galazzo, mm. uh, their, their podcast, uh, their uh, pre- preview, and then in that it said he said Real Madrid Man City match is like a basketball match right now because like people are trying to win uh, the mm. match, and Bayern Arsenal is like nobody wants to lose, yeah. and because both teams when were so scared of like really play like getting in the counter or like getting other team to score that everybody played so deep. That mm. nothing it was, was happening. Respect, so basically. Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, yeah. when is the last time Bayern showed any respect to Arsenal? Last time? I, like, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, that was no, what no, I, I was in my mind, and I get it. Muller was not playing, or whatever they can say, but still, they had a decent team that they had put up in front, and and yet they were like playing so defensively, showing showing some form of reverence to the way we play. So I'm just like, just show that just just that shows the amount of growth we have done. Uh, Tuchel was praising the team a little bit I, mean, I guess everybody does it but but at the same time i feel like a lot of managers are talking about like how we play and systems we play but what i am actually really from a system perspective what i'm scared about is this what he what Arteta has done right now with going so defensive in their in their what do you call it build up play mm-hmm. that it actually is crippling players like martinelli uh, because last year, the reason why we were so dynamic, Martin Lee was so dynamic, so uh, incisive in like his decision making and like scoring goals was mainly because we used to like go from defense to attack, like snap. Like my favorite goal from last year was that Odegaard Brighton goal, which was like out of the blue, came from nowhere and like hit them like an arrow, like, you know, so it, it, those kinds of attacks we are not doing. Even today's match, I remember like there are three or four instances where we had the ball, we were on the counter. And then suddenly we started playing like, let's build up again from the back. And I'm mm-hmm. like, they were like, you could have released Martin Lee at least two, three times. And I'm and this is where I feel a little sorry for the forwards too, because I'm like, you are not giving them enough for them to shine. So how can you then say Martin Lee is a bad player or anything of that nature? They're not yeah. bad players. I think ultimately yesterday that the forward line we lacked penetrative yeah. service, uh, we lacked the incisive pass and the progression, we lacked real clinicalness about our passing on the counter as well there were some loose passes that were just lacking the accuracy and that that cost us uh vijay i'm, I'm gonna wrap things up there with yeah. us but only because i need thank to move on but thank you for your thank you for yours yeah. uh, and thank you for your contributions yeah thanks mate appreciate it lovely stuff uh we've got uh four callers left uh lay is up next how you doing mate you good you well i'm good how are you doing not bad mate not bad tell me mate what's what's the bigger picture for arsenal with this so the, the bigger picture for me is actually um, the growth that we need to do as a fan base more okay. than anything else. Um, mm. I think we, because of the um, underachievement of the team as a whole for the past 15 years, I mean, for 15 years before Ateta came in, mm. that has bled into how we still look at the team. And I'm talking more generally now. Mm. Um, so it's almost like if you, you know, there is this thing almost called like, I mean, not almost like there's this thing, if you've been in a bad relationship for, you know, with someone, and then you go into a new relationship and because you've been traumatized with a bad one, yeah. you still bring That's the baggage, mm. you know, you, sure. you, you're projecting and you're doing all these things with the new person, even though he or she had nothing to do with your past experience. So I think that is where we are, where as a fan base, we don't even know how to act. We don't know how, to, we don't know what to make of this team. You know, mm. you, we are in a, in a supposedly title race where we're talking about this team glowingly. And the moment they lost or they had a goal, the, the, the moment they went down in the 80-something minute, the whole stadium emptied out. And they lost yeah. the game. Um, and there's this vitriol online. Yeah, I'm like, Always. you know, so we, we need to take a step back o- over the years. So when I look at the Liverpool, Liverpool team as an example, and I look at that team, 
the achievements, and, and I use quote unquote achievement because I feel like what they actually achieved in terms of what I would consider big cups, you know, the Premier, the Premier League and the Champions League, which I'm not trying to downplay at all, is actually, they only won each once, right, in the past nine years that Klopp was there. But this, this solidity and everything that they had at, um, at Anfield, the fact that they went all those, uh, all those games without losing at Anfield, it's not due to the fact that, it's not due to just how good the team is, a big part of it is the fans. Like, you know, are the fans and how they usually push that team when things are not going well. All of, the, you know, the past two years when we played them at Anfield um, and we drew those games, for me, I think we could have won. I mean, the so-called Anfield factor, it's not, it has nothing to do with the players. The players mm -hmm. are good, but that factor is due to the fans. And I think as a fan base, we haven't, Oh, you know, we 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 always sit here and talk about the team needs to grow and they need to do this. We as a people need to grow as well. We as a fan base, we need to grow and figure out what our role is in this experience, in this mm. journey that they're taking us on, and figure out how we can participate in a way that we can help push them in a meaningful way. So that I think is the bigger picture that we need to learn here. Like. The team, I think, you know, just looking at it, I think they're good enough. Obviously, there are certain things that maybe, you know, people talk about mentally and all of this other stuff, maybe. But I think the team is good enough. Yes, there are holes that need to be plugged. Like, you know, there are some practical things that can be done to help the team. But the bigger picture for me is what is the growth and the maturity that we need to achieve as a, as a fan base. I love that message. I think it's great. Um, it's perspective, isn't it? I think it was um, it was Mix who was talking about context and Lampte was talking about context as well. Um, it's such an important part of of where we are as a club, where we see things. Ultimately, on, on, a, on a spectrum of views, be it sport, be it politics, whatever, you get extremes at, at each end. And usually the extremes are the loudest ends, uh, you know, in terms of the biggest voices, in terms of the, the, the most attention at times. And that's why someone in the chat box, I think, before we even started the show, um, was complaining about how much negativity they were seeing and how loud, you know, certain uh, attention seekers, as I've certainly put out there. And I think it's not, that isn't the majority I think these are mice with megaphones was the phrase that I used because it's such a small, you know, portion um, of, of the actual overall view of, of where we are. There's disappointment, there's anger, there's frustration. But actually in the cold light of day in the morning, I think what we have to realise is this, this team is still only going in one direction. That's closer toward our goal of being a title winner in the Premier League and the Champions League is our main goals. Of course, I want to see us win trophies as well, like the FA Cup on top of that too. But... We are still moving in until we don't, until we stop moving in that direction, until we stop competing and start going backwards. There's no reason to make that change. And, you know, um, I think the only time that that changes in the next contract of Arteta, I've said this before, Arteta's next deal, which he deserves and should get with that new deal has to come the the expectation of a title of a Champions League. Otherwise, because if you are just competing in the next three you know, three to four years and you're not winning anything, that's when you think, is this as far as he can take us? And we can have that conversation at that time. But that is not now. That is not the conversation for the now because at the moment we've only gone in one direction and we are still getting very close and you can see how close we are. But Lay, I think you've raised some context for people, which is important. I thank you for being so patient as well in, in contributing. No, no worries. Thank you very much. One, one quick thing I also wanted to talk about. Very quick, you know, you go for it. Yeah, you mentioned that Teta and, 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 um, you know, signing the new deal. So he hasn't signed the new deal, right? After mm. the game yesterday and, you know, kind of like seeing what a lot of people were saying, um, you know, a lot of negative comments and things like that. No, I no. Just, a part of me just wondered, like, what if he says he's taking a step away after the end of this season? Like... Yeah, I, I'd be shocked. I mean, more I, so, be more likely that he said he wasn't renewing for the end of next season, but I see what you mean. Right, right. So if he says, okay, so so the the contract ends next season, right? Like, so what what if yeah. what if something like that happens where it's like, okay, I'm not renewing because I'm, <laughs> you know, something. I'll be shocked. Challenge. 
Yeah, exactly. But, I want a new yeah. challenge. You know, this has been stressful for me and my family. I'm just going to take time off, you know, which is not, I mean, it's, he's obviously not doing it for the money or anything like that. Like, you know, he, he loves, uh, he, you know, maybe a good challenge or, or the job or whatever the case may be. But that is also an option that is on the table for him to say. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and I think we are all forgetting that. And if that is a reality, where do we go? I mean, I'm not saying we're not going to find a, a, a better because I'm That's Team Arsenal question. first. You know, mm. I'm, I'm Team Arsenal first. Well, I've always if if I if say say let's let's use your hypothetical scenario. If at the end of this season Arteta said, "I think I've taken things as far," you know, not even that. Let's just say he says, "You know, I I'm done. Um, I'm taking a step away. I'm leaving." You know, in this hypothetical stuff. I think the overwhelming view would be, "Oh bollocks! What are we going to do?" Like you know, I think that's that. I think that that would be the majority viewpoint if Arteta was to leave, and I think that's telling, because I think I don't think people would have an answer. I don't necessarily think people would trust that we'd make the right appointment because we know that this ownership have made the wrong appointment before with Unai Emery. So, you know, I think it's a really good hypothetical um, and certainly one that if eventually when it does happen, and it will happen one day because Arteta will eventually leave. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to deal with that. Thankfully, I don't think that's going to happen soon, but uh, it's a very important contextual piece. But, Lady, yeah, thank I, you so much for your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You have a great rest pleasure. Of your Absolute pleasure, mate. Speak to you soon. All right. Uh, we've got uh, two, two left. Uh, just a heads up, Alif, I can notice that I think you're on the move at the moment. Make sure you park up before you join us, otherwise I'm not going to be able to get you on. Uh, and Abby, also, I see you down below. Make sure you turn your camera on and then I'll be able to get you on as well. But who is not moving and does has his camera on is Himanka, who's going to join us now. How are you doing, mate? You good well? Hi, Tom. Morning. Um... I can see your uh, subheading um, the, the, is standards. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, also, I've noticed, if you don't mind me saying, you've you've been looking uh, more and more therapist fatigued after every single caller. <laughs> so it's it's. You um, know, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'll, I would like to keep it short um, sure. and maybe more conversational. So please jump in whenever you would like. I feel so like therapy um, me now. I'm liking it. Keep going. Yeah. So before, uh, just a bigger picture. That you've been asking everyone mm. I, I have three points squad building slash management um expectations and the outlook so for the first part uh squad building and management um i've noticed that we have been moving from um these 13 14 so to say uh core players in our squad that our data trusts and uses yep. um almost season Upon season and then i think we've had this conversation in 21 22 season 22 23 season that oh hey we only have a 13 to 14 players of core yep. trusted players and then yep. let's add in and i think what has happened uh players that one in this core group trusted players have left and or uh players have not been trusted anymore so for example esr has moved out of those players granted probably because of injuries and mm. lack of match fitness um shaka has left Shaka's party left. has fallen out because of various reasons and um so i think we need to going forward we need to um actually have a squad i don't fully blame this on arteta i think the players match fitness is a big part of this so mm. more than just 13 14 being jesus trossard tomiyasu and kivior we have to move beyond this. We have to move on the upwards of 16, 17, 18 players that we can regularly use and um, we can substitute in for. And secondly, within this squad management point of view, I am disappointed in maybe the players themselves, but also in their use um, of, let's say, Vieira. You can make an argument for Nelson and ESR that uh, they have been injured or just out of match fitness and Nelson plays uh, better on left and we already have Martinelli Trossard but so um, Vieira Arteta bought him granted he got injured again so there's a big part of luck here uh, he he was a big ish signing for 30 odd million 
and um, he has not been able to uh, do anything for us, at least in a regular basis. Mm. And I think, yeah, I'm starting to think that this might have been a mistake for, because if um, we had bought in someone that would kind of get just start uh, being a first 11 or maybe a squad player in this 13 14 that I was talking about earlier, we would mm. have been much better off. Um, and then lastly, uh, the minutes played, I, I'm starting to think that this style of play that Arsenal have under Arteta is very taxing. So I've, I was looking at the squad minutes number. Mm. Um, Phil Foden has actually played more uh, minutes than uh, Bukayo Saka this season. I'm not interested. It's probably yeah. played across more competitions as well. So exactly, I, I think so. And then yeah. you can you, you 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 can see how he plays one game and rests for the next, plays another, rests for the next. So overall, he has about two hundred odd minutes more than Saka. And I think we've been seeing at least this season and the past season that he's started slow. He's he's getting injured. Um, he's tired. We we do tend to say this a lot. Um, Visa Visaka is tired a lot, but I think this kind of goes back to Nelson and Jesus has been injured, who could have played in his in Saka's position like he did mm -hmm. against uh, City at home, and um, so I think there are some questions about squad building and management. But this leads to my uh, second point of being expectations. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there's a big thing to say for the expectations because Arteta um, has kind of been a victim of his of his own success because you can yeah. you can see the eighth eighth finishes higher points um mm. and just overall a better style of play better players and then we were we were saying everybody was saying oh yes Ars arsenal will finish uh, um out of europe these players are not it arteta is i think uh within that first three games where we lost to chelsea and city um arteta was uh i think um the odds were that Arteta would be the first manager to get fired sacked i think and then mm. from 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 that i think every season we've set this moonshot um goal and then considered the considered that the minimum so uh for Guinness standards um <laughs> which is why um so i think this is also because every loss arrivals call it a bottle and arsenal fans um an apocalypse and this is how it is this is fans are gonna fan but um so this yeah. is kind of what i've been um seeing and then every single season so we are supposed we were supposed we were, were not supposed to challenge last year we did we were supposed to somehow win already and i do think if we do happen to win this season it would be one of the one of the greatest uh premier league um titles oh um, it, it, it's only seconds to the invincible yeah. yeah it's only if, if arsenal were to win the league this season it's only mm. seconds to the invincible because like because yeah talk about the rivals right if pep and klopp are the top five managers of all time then of course this arteta um uh winning toppling them both it's a it would be a huge deal but then the expectations mm. are such that chelsea and manchester united um can spend everything they have everything uh above and beyond but they still do don't get criticized to the same um to the same degree as arsenal but then if we don't win everything and everything in one season i guess that is just classified as a bottle of failure granted you have to but i think i think that that term you know bottling it's it's part of social media language these yeah. days with that question um it's designed we live at the moment in a situation like 20 30 years ago it wasn't that case you know it wasn't arsenal were described in the early 2000s at times as, as chokers because they choked the league remember when they lost to to leeds of course and manchester right. went on to win the league and stuff but it was it was kind of a throwaway stuff because it was where Arsenal were at at that time was a team that were expected to win the league. You know, with Manchester United, they were the two teams going for it. Now, Arsenal aren't expected to win the league because the team that are expected to win the league are Manchester City. If anyone else wins it, it's seen as a surprise. It is seen as a team that have not been expected to win it. And so if we don't win it this season, people will be angry or disappointed that we didn't punch above our weight again, significantly so, to win the title. But 
you know, these words of bottling, these words of blowing it, these words of, you know, the, it, it's just social media language, in my view. It's, it's designed to, to get people angry. It's designed to cause a reaction. It's designed to roll people up for engagement. And it, and it works. It absolutely works. You know, we don't, I don't want to do that here. That's why I get, him angry. I get people like yourself and I invite people that have views like saying, you know, we blew it, we bottled it. They never show up. There's a reason why they never show up. You know, and when they do show up, uh, which is very, very rarely, they rarely ever, you know, are able to, to change the viewpoint, you know, of the majority here. So, um, if ever. So, yeah, I, I'm just conscious of the time, but I think yes. you raised three um, points really, really well. Did you raise yes. the third one? Did you bring the third uh, one? I still did not, but I can go. Very quickly, uh, just 30 very, seconds. Very, very can you yes. round it? So, third one was the outlook. So, um, what are we actually looking forward for this squad and for, for our club moving forward? Um, First of all, move to a whole usable squad. Um, I accept that this takes uh, a, a good time, a good enough period of time because I think Pep took some time, Klopp took some time, four to five years. So I, I assume that by next season we have at least sixteen to eighteen good players who we can trust and use. And mm -hmm. again, I think Arteta might need to tinker because um, you. Trust comes one way and just a sense of um, understanding that players are going to get tired. They are gonna, they are getting slogged the whole season. I think we have um, Declan Rice and uh, Saka played more than 3,500 3, minutes That's crazy. this season alone. Um, and that has to come out of nowhere. I agree that it's luck too because Party was supposed to play some of, that, some of those minutes. Yeah. Um, Timber for White um jesus for saka but he also got injured um so i think the outlook has to um sway in our favor that arteta can identify and i hope he does identify these um these points that are um basically holding arsenal back and mm. uh, be able to win something I think we're in the best position ever to be able to address them because for the first time, this is a club that is established as a title challenger. So we're no longer kind of punching a different level again. We've got a squad that's punched to this level of competing for a title, whereas year upon year upon year, we were punching to a higher level. Now we've established ourselves. We're now adding to existing quality. We're not replacing it. We're replacing the quality that needs to be replaced. But like last season when we lost Xhaka, um, and we need to add more quality, you know, players like Jesus aren't starting for us, you know, players like Tommy Asu that were signed aren't starting for us, Ramsdale not starting for us, you know, players that were signed initially to help us compete at the top, top level, we're now replacing the players that need to be moved on and add to those that are already existing here. It's the first time we're going to be able to do that this summer, which is exciting. But um, Haminka, That's thank you so much for your time, mate. I really appreciate yeah. it. Have a nice day. You too. Um, we've got Abe and then Alif. Uh, I'm just going to give Alif a couple more minutes just to, to be ready. And Abe is going to be our penultimate caller. How are you doing, Abe? Appreciate your I, time. Hi, Tom. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to join the program. Thank you to, for being so say, patient. To, I know you've been waiting. To say our opinion on the, on the show. Thank you. Ten, uh, um, tell me what the bigger I, picture is for you, mate. Yeah. Um, first of all, I won't take much of your time um, oh, yeah, uh, because you deserve your rest, anyways. <laughs> the second uh, two hour show in three days is ridiculous I, I know it's not easy it's not easy you've been trying so god bless you um yeah i, I was gonna say um in the supporting um the supporters have to do more like the other guy said so like um like when you go to anfield you know they don't um they don't rest until the match um, finish if you know what i mean so mm. they give they give their best, you know, to support their team. And um, secondly, I think um, I would like Ateta to because I, I think Ateta don't um, they don't sign Ateta and Edu they don't sign players um, um, based on the um, the team they are challenging with. Say for instance the the Man City, the Liverpool. You can see the quality of players they have. You know, they have a lot a lot of pacey players. You know, they attack you at pace. You know, in the middle, at the back, at the front. You know. Everybody have pace, but in us now we we are too slow when we are when we are moving. You know, the same thing happened against Porto when we are playing. You know, once once mm. they, they 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 took the ball the ball off us, they attack us at pace. You understand? And the, the first is the case when we took the ball off the um, opponents. You know, before we move to their to their side, they they are already there. You yeah, know why is fun. that? 
Yeah, we are too slow all, all over mm. the pitch. That's what I'm saying. So the the task, the type of player we are signing, they are too slow. We need the pacey player, and at the same time, we need player who can dribble off, off front. We don't have any dribblers at all. Martinelli cannot dribble, cannot dribble. He can only run forward. We need dribblers, you know, like um, um, uh, Mitoma of um, Brighton, people like that who can who can take player on. You understand? Yeah, I think we need speed as well. I think we're lacking some speed. Uh, in yeah, yeah. You, you can see, you can see Sunday against us. You know, whenever he has the ball, he have he has to drive our players. You know, take about two three players on. You know, even um these guys um all our defenders, I think they they look like a disco boy to me. You know, they are not aggressive. You know, there is no aggression in their play. You understand? Look at I think there wasn't yesterday. I think there has this season, though. Um, this is the thing. If we're talking about yesterday's game, there was lots of deficiencies. We weren't quick enough. We weren't aggressive enough. We weren't um, physical enough at times. And we weren't smart and switched on enough for their goal. But throughout the course of this, course of this season, we definitely have been aggressive in games. We have been clinical. We have been quick. And we have shown some great technical ability and physical prowess. It just wasn't on showcase yesterday. It wasn't there yesterday and we lacked that, especially in the second half in particular, like the second half against Villa for much of it. You know, we lacked some of those qualities that I think we've maybe forgotten about from earlier in the season and through even midway through the season. Yeah, I understand that. But to me, I think I think um, aggression and um, all this thing is inbuilt. You know, you can't buy a player who is not, who is not um, aggressive, that you you want to you want to build that person to be to be an ag- mm. aggressive player. No, you can't do that. You have to you have to get a player that is already aggressive. That is that is how he plays. You understand? You can see them against um, Aston Villa. The guy that played um, their central back, their central half. What's the guy's name? Diego Carlos. Oh uh, my God! You can see it's in built. You can you can you can you can tell it's. Oh yeah, it's a good player. It's exactly. Good player, yeah. It's inbuilt. You can't you can't train someone to be aggressive. You have to go for that aggressive person. That is the way he plays. That is the way he knows how to play. You understand? You can't say you want to buy a player, a sluggish player, and you want to build it or to be to, to be aggressive. It will not work. You it will only do it for a while, then it will fade off later. You understand? You have to get a player who can do that all, all day long, you know, that, that love doing that. So I think as now need to buy players like that, you know. And up front we need um, PC player in the middle at the back, you know. We we have a lot to to do, you know. So I I, I think Ateta is trying, but it's just that they are not signing the right player for me. Mm. I think yeah. that there is certainly more that's needed this summer, and I think there's more that's needed in terms of that those qualities. I think we need yeah. to sign aggressive players, we need to sign quick players, we need to sign technical players, and yeah. I'm really hoping that we we see that exactly. Um, I, and 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 um, very quickly, in, 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 thank you. In two or three seasons um, coming now, you will see Tottenham and uh, Chelsea. They will override us if you don't if you don't sign this type of player. Look and see the way they are playing. By the time they gel together in two to three seasons, they will override us. I'm telling you. They have pace all over the pitch. Tottenham and Liverpool and um, Chelsea. You see? Mm. That's what I'm mm. saying. We have mm. to move in that direction as well. Mm. No, I think yeah. that we need to avoid the mistakes that clubs like Chelsea and Man United have definitely made um, and continue to, to build on the good things that we've done. But I think you raised some really good points about the characters and traits that, that we need this summer. And I really hope yeah. that we that we will do that. Abby. But again, thank you so much for your time and for your patience. I know you waited for a very long time to jump on. Hey, no worries. No worries. Thank you. We have to thank you more because you, you, you really tried. You deserve, <laughs> you, you deserve your rest. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I've got a few yeah. days off now, so... Uh, yeah, can't complain. Oh, Thanks, mate. Okay, that would be nice. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Take care. Right. Um, Alif, I can still see movement in the background, mate. So you're gonna, I'm going to give you a 30 seconds while I read out these uh, these super chats to to park yourself up. Otherwise, because I can't I can't have you on while you're in the car because it would be a massive... T- oh, wait, no, he is parked. He's showing me. He's showing me he's parked. Okay, we're getting him on. Alif, how you doing, mate? You good, Joel? No, yeah, apologies about that. Um, I, no, I don't apologise, mate. I understand you're doing a work day. You know, you've got things going yeah, on. When, when I got in the line. Oh, no, he's gone. He's, he's clicked off the screen. <laughs> he's waiting an hour and he's gone. Oh, no. Uh, I, what I would do is I'm going to hang around for two minutes 
And I'm going to read through some super chats and comments. And if I'll give a leaf to, oh, hold on. I think he might be back. He might be back. I'll read out those super chats quick. Uh, Temi says, uh, I'm mentally checked out. We go again next season. Uh, Sam says, I think it's insane that people are incensed that we are arguably a top 10 team in Europe. What more besides winning can you ask for? I suppose winning. Uh, Alpha, who's been a member for 27 months and a good friend of the show, Dan, says, who takes up another level and what positions? I think that's the question that we've got to ask, isn't it? You know, and I think we'll probably dedicate an entire show to the summer transfer window and who that is. And Trader Mike's, thank you so much for the kind donation. Says, see a percentage saves of FB Ref. We lack a player of trust uh, at the back. I think that's relating to Ray, I want to look out for. Um, Alif, don't press that button, mate. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll kick yourself off the screen again. Um, <laughs> tell me what... I know you've been waiting a long time, so I'm, I'm very curious to hear what you've got to say. What's the, the bigger picture for Arsenal? For me, I think some of the key things you already spoke about, and I'm not going to go into the whole Raya, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. For me, one thing you pointed out, was we don't have that KDB player, mm. someone that can change. That's credit change. to Alex from the different knock more so than me, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll happily take the price. <laughs> right. And I was thinking about this yesterday when we were playing. Sometimes, obviously, the manager can give his tactics on the pitch, they can train, but sometimes the players on the pitch need to feel the game and tweak it, maybe even themselves. And his players like KDB, I'm sure. Uh, Pep doesn't tell KDB, oh, take a 30, 40 yard shot. That's yeah, something they need to feel it, right? They feel it in the air. You know what? Mm. I'm just going to bang them from here and see what happens. Mm. And for me, we didn't have this kind of risk taking. Players like Henri Perez, they were known for, for example, scoring from outside the box. And we and yesterday to me, it felt like the players were waiting for that perfect pass into the box. They're trying to walk it in a bit. There wasn't yeah. enough taking from outside the box, Ownership. in my opinion. Hmm. Exactly. No, no, one and, took, no one took the incentive, did they? To, and that happened against yeah. Villa as well. I think, for me, the, the most natural player in that team was Odegaard. To me, Odegaard looked like he's playing where he belongs. He hmm. He's the one that, for me, looked like he's at that level. He's in that elite Champions League level. Yeah. Saying, I think we now need to think about the summer. I've already given myself in my head, we've lost the title. So if we win, it's a bonus yeah. for me right now. I'm saving myself that I'm take. Yeah, for fair me, enough. I don't blame you. <laughs> for, me, it's, for me, it's all about um, who we buy as a striker. You can maybe confirm. I've been avoiding a lot of the post-match uh, post uh, interviews, stuff like that. I just don't want to see it right now. But I saw on Twitter, apparently Arteta mentioned something about we don't have a striker that can score. Yeah, he says we don't have a 30 to 40 goal striker at the moment. Yeah, which you'd think that he wouldn't be saying unless that's what he wants. You know, I think so. that I think we as fans know it. It's good to see that the manager knows it as well. The fact Agreed. that he admit that, to me, I think that's going to be probably the number one thing they're going to do. Whether we get Isak, and for me, Isak is that player. The way okay. he plays is very dynamic. He'll shoot from outside the box. He'll go inside the box. He's got that level of trickery to take on a couple of players maybe within the box or outside, run with the ball. I think Giriakos, uh, the sporting striker, is an unknown yes, quantity. Definitely. Obviously, he's not prem proven, but I think he's another player. He could be that marquee signing for us that pushes the team because they, they do look like powerful players. They're willing to take a shot. They'll change the game up, but for me, yesterday you could. For me, it was quite telling as well. The there wasn't like a spearhead in our attack, if you could know mm. what I mean. We just I didn't look mean. threatening. We just didn't yeah. look that threat. Whereas well, you look at look you look at the teams that are now, you know, in the in the the final stages of of the competition, right in the Champions League, for instance. You have got Real Madrid that have obviously Vinny Junior and, and Jude Bellingham. They're young, but they are world world one hundred million plus miles away players that you know can mm. produce those massive moments. You've got. Um, mm. Borussia Dortmund, ironically, have, have gone through a relatively, you know, they've gone through a decent challenge with their pathway, but still, they've got a, a, a classic number nine, you know, Nicholas Fulkrug, and they've got a lot of young players around them. And that that, cl that classic number nine, in its sense, is also doing it. And they knocked out an Atletico Madrid side that probably went out because their striker, Alvaro Morata, has not been clinical enough. He's actually been very poor of late. And they've got Antoine Griezmann, of course, who can produce those levels. But again, wasn't there on that night. You've then got PSG with Kylian Mbappe, of course, uh, yeah. as, as the other one. And, and Bayern Munich with Harry Kane, you know. So that's, that is the level. 
that's where we're at. And, and of course, Man City with Haaland too. Yeah. And I think the other areas was quite telling. And this is not necessarily the Champions League, but it did show us an issue, was the left-back position. Mm. Out of the whole team, there's two positions Arteta's been struggling to deal with. That's the left-back position, primarily due to Timber being injured. I think he would have played. But I think in the Jan window, and more recently, there's been more rumours linking us with potentially a mm. new left-back. And yeah. I can see um, Arteta looking for a naturally left foot player to play that role. I think our next evolution will be Timber going as a right-back because I see him being uh, defensively adequate, like Ben White maybe, but as well as contributing a bit more towards the attack. And similar, I think uh, Arteta may want that for the left side, a naturally left foot player. And I think that left CM role is good, is an issue for me, particularly. Uh, as mm. excited as some of us were with Kai Havertz, for me, he just hasn't um, he just hasn't lived up to expectation. And the fact that Arteta was willing to move him from left CM to striking role shows he doesn't necessarily trust him there. If Kai Havertz was meant to be that left CM and Arteta fully trusted him, I think Arteta would have stuck with his guns. But it seems like he's he's trying to still fit Kai Havertz into this team. And I think in the summer, if we do get someone like Isak or Griakos, immediately Kai Havertz will probably go to left CM. But I, I then again, I don't necessarily trust Kai Havertz to play that left CM role. So I think those two, well, the, the striking role, I think everyone agrees already, they know. But for me, that left back position, that left CM, and obviously without saying the backup for Saka uh, is needed, but I think that left back and that left CM role is the next step of evolution that Arteta needs yeah. to go through. To Could be that we've already done part of that as well, Alif, because I think that perhaps Jurian Timber is maybe seen as, as, as that left-hand side player. That could be. He started there against City in the Community Shield, was excellent. He started there yeah. against Nottingham Forest and sadly was injured in that game. But yeah, it's potentially that the Jurian Timber's that. We are... The club are looking for a defender. There are suggestions that it even might be a left back with Timber's future, perhaps maybe more on the right hand side and be a competitor for ben, ben White. And we need to rotate on the right so we can give Ben White a, a rest as well. And I think you're right about the left centre mid. That needs to be sorted. We need to find another midfielder to go into that slot because, and it needs to be a top, top player that can break lines, yeah. find passes, but also has the energy and stamina to, to play that box to box role. And, and we need a couple of forwards. One, I think we need a really pacey winger to give competition to Pakai Saka. If that's Nico Williams, if that's Pedro Neto, if we can keep him fit, which is another question. If it's somebody else like a Xavi Simmons, although, again, very difficult to get him, would love that. And then we need the centre forward. We need that killer. And I think Alexander Izak, I like Jokerez a lot. And I think I, I talk about him a lot because I don't think Izak is going to be available. But if there is any hope in hell that you can get Alexander Izak, he is without a doubt the one. Alif, I think you've raised some fantastic points. Thank you again for being so patient. I really appreciate it. One last thing, Tom. Uh, Very quick, because I would, I, I need to have some time off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thank you for having you know, having of me course. on and uh, being for me patiently. I want to leave this, and you can talk about it on your own. Uh, mm. Yesterday, I was talking on my pod on my own channel, and mm. give it a shout out. Yeah, it's been fifth. Is there in club? And we just recently inside me and my friends, bunch of us, uh, a few different fans from Chelsea, Liverpool. We talk about the usual stuff. There was a comment made, and this he, he kind of it's deep in my thought, and I don't want to admit it or acknowledge it. And it's something you raised. I have this overriding fear. I really hope Arteta doesn't become a bit like Brendan Rogers. The okay. football league, he's made us competitive, but yeah. he just and that's purely because I really want Arteta to succeed. I'll leave mm. you there. Thank you again. If you want to just say some stuff on your own before. Uh, you finish your channel. Thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that and your time. I, I don't think it's an unfair theory at all, to be honest. So yeah, thank you. Well, Thanks, mate. Yeah, no, is 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 um, is Arteta the guy before the guy? Is the question? Um, is he the guy or the guy before the guy? Um, and can Arsenal go get the guy if he's not the guy? That's a lot of terms using the guy in a sense. But I hope that made sense. Um, I'm gutted. I, I'm absolutely devastated. I'm disappointed. Um, I really thought that maybe we would do something special against Bayern. We didn't. Bayern showed their their experience. Bayern showed their quality. They showed why they are who they are. And we showed that we've still got a way to go. 
But what we also showed, as I talked about in the start of the show, is that we showed that we're tired, we're spent, we are exhausted. And as I said at the start of the show, and I maintain this point, and I will maintain this point going into the weekend, is I don't want to see Saka starting against Wolves. I don't think I want to see Erdegaard starting against Wolves. I don't think I want to see Rice starting against Wolves. And you might call me mad, and you might say that this is crazy, Tom. We, we've still got a chance to win the league. Why would you do that? And the reason why is because if we do start them against Wolves, and even if we win that game with them against Wolves, I'm really concerned that we've just days until Chelsea and then just days after that to a Spurs side that have had two weeks off. I just don't see how we can come through that. So for me, I think we need to rotate this weekend. We need to learn from these mistakes of not rotating enough. And we need to go into that Wolves game with some rotated players. And if we need to bring players on at the end to try and grab it. But I, I have faith that there's, there's players in this team that can beat a Wolves side that have not been particularly great in 2024. You know, that have not particularly impressed in 2024 at all, have definitely slipped. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that we rest them. They need that rest. If we've got any hope of beating Chelsea and Spurs, because if we do manage to win our next three games, we've got an opportunity because then we don't have a game until Bournemouth, which is a week later. We then don't have a game until Manchester United, which is a week later. And then we don't have a game until Everton, which is the final week of the season. If you can win the next three games, Arsenal have a great chance. And we have to pray Man City slip up as well, of course. But the only way I see us winning all of our remaining games is if we manage the next three so perfectly that we can come away with all three with a win. And we can only do that, I believe, by personally rotating and giving some players some, some desperately, desperately needed rest. Um, I'll stand by that. Anyway, I want to massively thank you, my callers uh, for coming on. We've been going for just over two and two hours, 10 minutes. So for those that are listening on usually on catch up and on audio platforms, there's a reason why this hasn't dropped into your feeds quite as early as it usually does, because we've been going for two hours and 10 minutes. It's important to have these types of shows. It's important after these types of results to get the views of more than just me. I don't like this being an echo chamber. I don't like this just me being talking to you and going crazy, which I know I can do. I always open up the phone lines to anyone. Uh, when that link goes into that chat box, when that link goes into that chat box, it's, I don't know why I repeated that sentence. When that link goes into that chat box, there is no discrimination against who can click it and who can come on. And everyone who clicked that link and sat down in below and stayed in here throughout the whole thing, some people may have jumped out because they couldn't wait any longer, but everyone that jumped and clicked that link um, that was able to get in because there was a there was a point in the show where obviously there was we were full up, um, so no one else could join. But anyone that got in came on and spoke their words, spoke their views, spoke their opinions. And do you know what was really interesting is that we talk about the anger, we talk about the the frustration. There has been over a thousand people watching either across Twitter or across YouTube on this show concurrently. I'm sure there's several thousand that have tuned in and gone away throughout, which is amazing. And thank you. And please do drop a like and help us to get to 1K every single day on that target. But when you think about the reaction to yesterday's result, and when you thought that you were scrolling through your social media and you were seeing our Teta out people and you were seeing crazy tweets or crazy watch along reactions, which let's be real, are just characters at the end of the day, trying to make a quick buck. But in reality, when we've jumped on and we've opened up the phone lines and we've given people an opportunity to talk, if you actually take it and you listen in, yes, there's frustrations. Yes, there's criticisms. Yes, there's concerns. But did you see anybody shouting and screaming? Did you see anybody saying, I'll take her out? I think that what this does is it provides a great, excellent example of the sample of, of, I think, actually where the real grounded objective views are right now it's easy to jump into a chat box and just spout some rubbish it's a lot harder to to take the, the time to jump onto a phone call and have a conversation and i think that's a better representation of where the majority of fans really are at uh, and what the genuine opinions um are so thank you for everybody that, that tuned in if you couldn't you can be sure that we'll be doing more of these phone-ins in the future um don't get whipped up in the chaos Remember yourselves that we are always and continue to move forwards. It's gutting, it's disappointing, can't win them all. Um, and we sadly didn't last night. But certainly I have more faith and more optimism as ever that we'll be continuing to push forwards. And until we stop doing that, I'll always have that faith and that optimism. So I look forward to Wolves. Uh, I look forward to the summer. And I'm already looking forward to next season. But this one's not over yet. And you can be sure that we continue to bring you plenty of progress every single morning. 8 a.m. UK time. It won't be like this, um, but uh, it will be the usual 8 a.m. show. Back tomorrow, looking ahead to that game against Wolves. Uh, Mikel Arteta's got his press conference tomorrow as well. Um, 
I just hope we rotate. I really do. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.